Welcome back. My name is Kit. I'm Phil. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a podcast about TV and film. But this series is all about Star Wars, baby. The aggressive marathon. negotiations. Is that what we're about here? <laughs> aggressive negotiations. Mm-hmm. That's a callback used twice in this film. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been here a while, you were here for the OG trilogy and uh, the Phantom Menace. And now we're here for what many consider to be far and away the best Star Wars film. <laughs> uh. Attack of the Clones. Um, and so we've all seen it before. Steve and, and, and Phil are diehard Star Wars fans. I think that's fair. Uh, me, not so much. And that's the shtick of this series. Welcome just- to the party, pal. <laughs> Is that a die hard reference? That's a diehard reference, yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. I was like, why did you do that? And then I realized I had said die hard. Uh, yeah, so tune in later in the week. We're going to be dropping episodes on uh, The Raid, uh, Redemption, the first one, as well as uh, uh, Cloverfield. Quiet, Cloverfield. Cloverfield, yeah. And then A Quiet Place for our patrons. They voted on A Quiet Place for the month of March because the month of March was which movies had, pre- <clears throat> uh, or all movies that had premiered at South by Southwest. And uh, the listeners were voting upon them, and they chose that one. Uh, handily. Not even close. Yeah. Well, 55% of the vote went to, out of four, quick math, that's a lot, mm-hmm. went to a quiet place. So yeah. mm-hmm. you can email the show at streamingthingspod at gmail.com. Any funny tweets you might have made recently, share them with us. We love to hear that stuff. Also, you can uh, support the show financially at patreon.com slash streaming things and uh, join at a variety of tiers for a variety of plethora, myriad bonuses and rewards. Or you can support the show for free. Many people ask how. You're doing it right now just by listening. Yeah. Uh, that's the main thing. But also you can uh, uh, rate Listen, the show. Rate, review, share it. share it with your friends and loved ones. Mm-hmm. Easter's coming up. Tell the Easter bunny about it. Put the po- put an iPhone with all of our episodes like downloaded onto it into an <coughs> Easter basket and gift it to your family members. Ooh, yeah. Perhaps a Zoom. Like that time you two put uh, their album on all uh on all yes, I exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. There you yeah. go. Yeah. We are we are the, the bottom of podcasts. <laughs> you, you beat me to it. That was gonna be my exact analogy. I'll never be number two. That's all the business dudes. Yeah, tune in later in the week for those episodes, but keep going with this Star Wars series. And I think it's picking up steam like the world. It's it's coming May the fourth is approaching. It is. Uh, so everybody's going to be marathoning these soon. Did you see that 24 hour Star Wars marathon? Yeah, I did, that yeah. I think AMC's doing it. <clears throat> Ooh, dang. Well, the weirdest thing about so all the Skywalker saga only, right? So all nine of the movies are being played back to back to back. Do you know when it's, can you imagine when it starts? Like if you had to guess, when does that, when does 3 a.m. I guess it would just start at like 7 a.m. and then just go until it's done, right? That's what I would have thought. If it was that, I would consider doing it just for like GP, right. as they call, just for like, oh my God, did you hear about that legend that did it? People would <clears throat> think about me for years. Yeah. It starts at 8 p.m. What? Yeah. Whoa. Well, I guess they don't want to like give up most of their screen time during the day to a, I guess. Uh, to a it, marathon like that. I, I think it starts with a Phantom Menace. They're doing timeline order. So you don't have to show up uh. until like 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's dive right in. What we're going to do is give our overall thoughts about this movie, our history with it, and our thoughts now. But before we do any of that, we're going to do our, our famous Star Wars Mad Libs. I think it's fair to say famous. Yeah. Across the galaxy. World Many solar systems. Famous. And a galaxy far, far away. That's how famous this Mad Libs mm. section is. If you don't know what it is, I'm going to ask these two jabronis for words to put the pen to the paper to craft a story thanks to the official Star Wars Mad Libs booklet. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to see the actual story. Are you guys ready to give me the words? I've never been more I am. in my life. Oh, my God. Well, does that mean you're going first? Uh, uh, sure. All right. Kid, is that okay if he goes first? Absolutely. Do you yeah. acquiesce your first place? It's our guest. Mm. How, 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 how kind of Even us. though last time he threw me off and I ended up saying mittens to adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up twice, I think. I think mittens was the second time. It was not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil. Give me a verb ending in ing. Cleaning. Kit, I need a plural noun. Mittens. Mittens. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Noun. Committee. Do we have to say it like that? Yes. Committee. Plural noun. Buns. Is that in relation to Princess Leia's hair? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the hot cross variety? <laughs> <laughs> the hot cross variety. That's right. <laughs> Verb ending in ing. Um, hovering. Adjective. Course. Verb. Searching. Well, search. There you go. Yeah, we'll do search. Yeah. Noun. Noun. 
icing. Like cake icing? Yeah. Frosting, if you will. Slash frosting. <laughs> Whatever fits better, you know? Uh, noun. Emmy. Did you just, just, at your did you just look at my Emmy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope it's like, and what a wanna Emmy. <laughs> oh, I'd like to thank everybody for the opportunity to work on this film. <laughs> Joe. Emmys don't work on me, only Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> Plural noun. Beans. Are they out of the bag? They're out of the bag. because you looked at your coffee? No, I just, that's not how my brain works. Okay. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> fair. I'm just everywhere, all at once. Adjective. Right. Adjective. Sexy. You looked at me. I did. That's oh how God, God. That is so how my much. brain works. <laughs> the speed of which part of the body plural. Mm. <laughs> buns. Where do you use buns? Does that count? Using it again. <laughs> this is a buns with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Plural noun. I don't, don't say that. Okay. <laughs> no, say, say it. it. Ovaries? Say it. <laughs> See how this goes. <laughs> See? I knew it wasn't a good idea. Oh, yeah, that's <clears throat> great. That's great. Okay, let's not. Uh, no, I'm using it. Okay. <laughs> Number. 69. Nice. <laughs> the only one. Right. There's literally, <laughs> there's literally one option for and, that. And then the last prompt <laughs> is the same plural noun, so it's ovaries again. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Be bad. So stay tuned to the end of the episode to see how Ovaries plays into the story that these two have crafted. Just three dudes <laughs> talking about Ovaries. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we're going to go through our overall thoughts on this film, what it was like watching it uh, likely as kids, and then what it was like watching it this week again for the umpteenth time. Um <clears throat> For Star Wars fans, maybe only the second. <laughs> and then uh, we'll do a play-by-play, scene-by-scene recap and do some fun uh, little little skits at the end where we talk about uh, our medal ceremony. We're going to give a gift to this film, an award rather, you know, what this film does better than any other Star Wars film in the franchise. That's our, <clears throat> that's our shtick for the medal ceremony. And then we're going to have to rank them, but it's not just any old ranking. We have to agree as a trio, the official Streaming Things podcast ranking of the Star Wars films. I have a feeling today will not be much of an argument. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. But maybe it will. Number one. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's dive right in, fellas. Phil, I'm, I'm curious to hear what your history with this film is like and what it was like watching it again for the show. Hopefully not at 1.5 speed. Um, I definitely did watch parts of this movie at 1.5 speed. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, throwing that out there. Um I watched it when it came out, of course, <clears throat> on the big screen. 2002, um, baby. Two, yeah, 2002. I was, what was I, like, yeah. 45? Yeah, I was like 47. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's a good time. And as a kid, I liked it because it was, it was fun. You got to see Jedi fighting and uh, these grand battles with the clones. And um, at the time, the CGI was great. Ships uh, were super cool. Um, that specifically the scene in the um in the asteroid belt with the seismic charges were was like oh iconic. yeah <clears throat> yeah uh and it sort of uh um allowed you to to um experience th- star wars in a grander way that we hadn't seen up to that point because there were so many jedi on screen at one point that it's like overwhelming like holy shit we've never seen this many at once. And I liked it for what it was as a kid. Cause I was a child. I watched it last night at like 10 PM and wow, have I changed my tune? This is a bad movie. I did this not is enjoy this is, this is bad movie. This, this is, is bad, bad movie. movie. This is bad movie. <clears throat> this is uh, not a good movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it has not held up. Uh, the green screen specifically, like all the digital stuff in this movie just looks awful now, I think. Um, th- last week, I praised um, episode one for having like a unique look to it, like it, like it was um, done on film and it combined CGI with practical effects. For the life of me, I cannot understand why they didn't just have some practical effects in this movie. It seemed like everything was fake in this. And I knew that going in, of course, but I remember it looking better than it actually did. Um, And I also, I think I, I think I also watched this in the least optimal way you could. I watched the release DVD 
full screen version <laughs> Oof. on a 4K TV. So rip. Obviously not the best um, option, but um, I came over to Steve's house to record this and he had it on. Uh, he had the last few 15 minutes on and it did look better on the Disney Plus version. So I guess the they, what version? Blues. Sorry. Thank you. So I think they have gone back and like touched it up and made it look better for 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 HD. Um, but uh, holy shit, that movie has not aged well. Um, and last week, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed watching episode one. I had the exact opposite reaction to this one. I thought I would enjoy it more, did not. So uh, unfortunately, I think episode two uh, is a not a super enjoyable film for me to watch. Mm. And uh, I was kind of sad about what you would call that. sand. It is sand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't like it that much. Um, obviously, there are things to everywhere. like about, about this movie. Like on paper, this movie should work. But in mm -hmm. execution, I think it just fails across the board. Mm. So. Mm. Mm. Steve, I'm scared to do this. Um, what did you think? Why are you scared to do this? All of our Attack of the Clones fans are going to get zero reprieve. Oh, because you just assume I'm going to shit all over Attack of the Clones? Well, I've been here for the last four episodes, and I know you hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is kind of an interesting story where, so when 2002 was out, mm -hmm. you know. Post 9-11. Post 9-11 world, we just. <laughs> when they released 2002. Yeah, yeah, when they yeah yeah <laughs> 2002 just dropped. Everybody, get in here, the Patriot Act's coming. Um, mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, so watch going, this drive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, so go into the theater, really, really hyped. It's another Star Wars. I think at this point was around the time I had started souring on Phantom Menace where like, I was just kind of like, I don't know if I like this. This is a little kid friendly. So I go see Attack of the Clones and I remember, and I think I told this story last week, I remember coming back and some neighborhood friends were like, oh, how is it? Is it better than Phantom Menace? I'm like, dude, bruh, shit's all over Phantom Menace. <laughs> you don't even believe it. There's like less Jar Jar, so already <clears throat> better movie. And, um, you know, I kind of believed that for a long time. Because, you know, this movie introduces the clones. I love the clones. Mm -hmm. And Django cool. Fett's in it. I love Temora Morrison. He's fucking awesome. He's not using this movie hey enough. Uh, that would have been so great. I'm just a simple man trying to make his way in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then, like, Hayden Christensen's finally here. So, like, we have an adult actor playing Anakin Skywalker. Let's see what he can do. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, he's being directed by George Lucas. So, again, yeah. it's like an uphill battle for that poor guy that I think only... Now are people starting to appreciate Hayden Christensen for the actor he is? I think these movies kind of ruined him for a long time. And, yeah. and, and like, it's not his fault at all. It's sad, yeah. He's a decent actor. Like uh, he's just <clears throat> in this movie. who's being directed by a person who doesn't know human emotions. And also you could see like, like Phil said, there's like Jedi they're fighting. There's like, you've never seen this many Jedi on screen before. It's dope. You see that really cool action scene. Um, and then what I think is the pinnacle of this movie, at least in terms of pop culture, not so much my own personal feelings, but in terms of pop culture, I think the thing that everybody talked about when this movie came out was the, uh, was, whoa, Yoda can fight with a lightsaber. Yeah. Holy shit. Like I have a vivid memory of going to school after this movie came out and there was this kid, he was one of the popular kids. He was like a, such a douchebag jock, dude. He was like the epitome of like dude, every- right here. <laughs> it feels Phil. Uh, but no, he, this dude was the epitome of every 1980s high school villain jock person, right? His name was Biff. Yeah, yeah it's Biff Tannen. Yeah. Uh, but this dude came up to, like, this dude would make fun of me and all the, and everything. But when this movie came out, he walked up to me specifically and wanted to have an honest conversation. Like, dude, what'd you think about Yoda fighting? How sick was that? <laughs> wow. Wasn't that so cool? This little dude's flipping everywhere. Fuck, blew my mind. And I'm like, Hi, <laughs> this is the most you've ever spoken to me without dunking me in a toilet. Do we do, do we talk about this now or be like or like after the wedgie? Like which which <laughs> I had already brought up my yeah. lunch money to give to him. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Please, sir. He was folding it up as he said that. Like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just it's, it's, the transaction still happened. He yeah. was just more friendly about it. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, this this movie wasn't amazing at the time. But I think over the years, I've always said, like, I like it's a close race, but I always put this movie a little bit above Phantom Menace for the longest time. 
So when I sat down to rewatch it this week, you know, as I'm watching it and as it keeps going, I'm like, you know what? I'm changing that. This movie's worse than Phantom Menace. Just because as much as I dislike Phantom Menace, Phantom Menace at least has pod racing. It has at least Darth Maul. It has that lightsaber fight at the end, which in the duel of the fates and it just goes fucking hard Mm. and it's awesome. And you can kind of like, would you call it? more wizard would you say <laughs> uh when i watch that scene i go yippee <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but this movie has what i think is some wild pacing this is the longest star wars movie up to this point that we've watched just two mm. hours and 23 minutes it's the yeah. longest one so far i think last jedi beats it by like 10 minutes and mm. rise of skywalker matches it but it's literally tied for second as the longest running Star Wars movie, yeah. which is like, why? Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of stuff that happens in this movie that doesn't need to happen at all, period. But also, I think this movie really because, you know, we've always talked about how George Lucas isn't the best actors director. I think this is the movie that like if anybody was like, well, he's he's directing a kid or oh, he wants the Jedi to be stoic. Yeah. Oh, he wants the queen to be stoic because she's trying to be <clears throat> diplomatic. OK. If you are trying to give him some rope um, for directing Phantom Menace, you cannot do that in this movie because no excuse. The crux of this movie, the emotional crux of this movie, is the relationship between Anakin and Padme and the love story that blossoms uh, throughout. And I say blossom sarcastically because it's fucking horrifying. It's awful. Like the, the, yeah. the, the first half of the movie is interesting because the way. Hayden Christensen is portraying Anakin is like, you know, he's pretty aggressive with how much he wants to show Padme affection. Like, hey, you've grown more beautiful, like all this stuff. And Padme's reacting realistically. She's like, ha okay, yeah. like leaving. Or like in the, when he tries to over talk, uh, you know, talk over her in the, the when they have that meeting with the queen, she's like, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> fuck you. I'm doing my, that shit is appropriate. And then out of nowhere, <clears throat> They make out and it's like, oh my God, we can't date. And it's like so unbelievable. I know. And I feel so bad for these two actors that I think could probably have chemistry. Cause I think, I think they, they definitely have some chemistry, but the writing and the pacing of the scenes that they're in does not lend to that relationship at all. It makes it completely unbelievable. And it's just kind of weird where it's like, Hey, I haven't seen you in 10 years. Want to get married? <laughs> It feels like a first, first draft. Like it doesn't feel like they spent any time on that whole part, part of the movie. Yeah. Uh, And it's just, uh, I just think a colossal failure in terms of directing actors. Um, If I were to say good things about this movie, you know, I like Count Dooku a lot. I think he's a very rich character that doesn't get enough screen time, you know, in any movie he's in. Mm -hmm. Because I just think he's a neat character. And he's played by Christopher fucking Lee, who's awesome always. And I just love his portrayal of a Sith Lord. The Yoda fight's fun. The Geonosians are fun. We get to see more aliens. I love that about Star Wars is when you you get to see more aliens. I think modern Star Wars lacks that. They don't have enough aliens. Um, But yeah, those are the positives. I And we'll get into it when we go into the recap of some of the things I like. Because I don't want to shit on this movie completely because that would be not fun. Right. Uh, But Kit, I'm interested to see how you feel. Because you had a much more positive (laughs) thoughts on the prequels leading into this coverage. I did. Does that remain true? It does not. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, I think uh, a lot of people of my hmm, people I hang out with, you know, people who talk about movies a lot online are generally more positive on the prequels nowadays. Um, It's it's a whole thing, especially. And I I like that their heart's in the right place because a lot of it is coming from what happened to Hayden Christensen and Ahmed Best and Jake Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And so it's 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 kind of a leave them alone. This is actually good kind of thing. Uh, it's not, but you should leave them alone. Yeah, you yeah. should definitely you know leave what I mean? them alone. Like it's okay to, two things can be true. That this is <clears throat> Hayden Christensen's performance in this movie is, is like one of the worst I've ever seen in my life, but also leave him alone. He's a nice guy yeah, and it might not too. be his fault because there's right. a lot of things like writing and directing and the take that the director and the editor choose that dictates whether or not the performance looks good to the average yeah. person. You stay in a scene four seconds too long and the performance seems terrible, but yeah. it's the editor's fault. Um, yeah, and, editing is a huge key component to acting. And I think the editing is also awful in this movie. Yes. There's moments where I almost care 
and then it does like a vertical wipe. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like right as the dude's in the sand weeping, it's like, and I'm, what the fuck? Yeah. Who did that? Yeah. Take them out back and sternly talk to them. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but you don't I want to do, do it publicly before I like get sweaty and red in the face. Uh, I want to read a couple like positive to borderline positive reviews on Letterboxd of friends of mine or mutuals of mine or people that I follow um, that like this is uh, Sam Van Hallgren, who's like he does the film spotting show. Um, he produces it. It's three and a half stars for Attack of the Clones. But his only review is no luck swaying the kids to my side with this one. The nine year old during the picnic scene. Which one of these two would you like to be stuck with in a room? Uh, so even the nine-year-old was like, these people are like robots. Are yeah. these people robots? There's a really, really long review from Sam uh, from the same <clears throat> show where he said, three stars. It's buried under a whole lot of silliness and a dead on arrival love story. But the movie is also a legit meditation on the fragility of democracy, which may not have resonated much in 02, but resonates like hell in the age of Trump. Um, I would argue it resonated in 02 because that these movies were written in direct response to the Bush administration at the time. Yeah. Like he, George Lucas like says that, like he, he obviously he's taken inspiration from the Nazis for the empire, but like what's going on with the Senate is directly inspired with what was happening in the U S during like, yeah. the Patriot Act. Like we mentioned and stuff. He said, he goes on the fact that Lucas burdened his cash cow with all of this opaque political baggage used to annoy me. Now it seems almost heroic especially in light of recent pair of perfectly entertaining, but mostly brainless reboots. Uh, this review was written in 2017. So it was right after last Jedi and uh, force awakens, I presume. Mm. Um, but any who's more friends. Cause I, I just want to, cause I have nothing good to say. And I, refu <laughs> I refuse to, uh, this is Alex friend of the show. Alex, who's on the show sometimes. Oh yeah. Two and a half stars, but it should not have taken seven seasons of a TV show to give this movie any merit. Yes. And that's what I was going to see if you talked about it all, like having watched I, the Clone Wars show, what it's like watching this movie now with all the extra context that I don't have and will never have. Frankly. Well, I, w I was gonna, <laughs> I was going to talk about this context more in our Revenge of the Sith coverage. Okay. Um, but it's you know, you brought it up and I think it is something that I truly believe is I, th I have this theory that s people love the because, again, there's this, like this big renaissance for love of the prequels, like mm -hmm. people saying they're good films. And I think in a vacuum, they are not. And which is when we first saw these movies, it was in a vacuum and they were not. If you watch them nowadays, you have seven seasons of the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. You have all this, you have all these books and comic books and, you know, everything else that sort of plug in the, the gaps that this movie's lacking. It fleshes out the relationship between Anakin and Padme more. It fleshes out the relationship between Anakin and Obi-Wan more. Uh, with Palpatine, it fleshes out the world of the Senate. And so when you have all of that story in context, when you watch these, it makes them better because you're like, oh, well, this the Trade Federation is doing this thing because X, Y, Z. Count Dooku is actually a very layered character who doesn't actually want to, you know, he he kind of want to work works with the Sith Lord, but on his own sort of, you know, he wants he really does want to take corruption out of the Senate and stuff. Um but if you and so if you have all that knowledge, it does they make these seasons or these movies better because, you know, the whole story, whereas you're not getting any of that in the movies. So as movies, they kind of fail. But the cool thing is they do open up the world where you can have those stories. And that is a plus as well. I, I was thinking about that driving home from dropping my son off last night. And it's the reason I don't like Star Wars in general. Like I legitimately and again, I'm not being funny. I know I'm normally a goof. I'm not trying to insult anyone. Obviously, it's just my opinion. And especially the guys in this room adore this franchise. Uh, I don't think, I think maybe two of these 11 movies are any good, like in and of themselves. Like, like they're just well-made. They tell a cohesive <clears throat> story that is emotionally resonating and uh, has uh, uh, sauce on display in the filmmaking. Um, but the world, the universe is really cool. It's fun to live in. Uh, and you, like you said, you have all these ancillary projects, the books, the comics, the toys to fall back on in your brain when you're watching these things. It's just, but like the, even though the execution is so shitty, it makes it fun. It's in the same way. Yeah. And again, I'm going to piss just whoever I didn't piss off to go ahead and get the rest <laughs> of the people. Now. It's the same way with like superhero. Attack of the comments. Yeah. It's the same way with superhero comics. That's yeah. Uh, 
ninety five percent of them sure. are trash. Yeah. Like they really are. I've read a bunch of them, and I'm like the story sucks. Like the dialogue's terrible. Why would they say that? Why would they draw her that way? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but some of them are really good, but very few, right? But they're all fun because you know all this stuff about each one of these characters, and it's like fleshing it out, and you're filling it in in your brain with all the. It's just a, it's a fun place to 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 hide and stave off existential <clears throat> dread. Yeah, it's a fun yeah. little <laughs> yeah, it's a fun little sandbox to play in. So that's how I feel about Star Wars. It's like I really legitimately think there's if I'm being honest, like three or four, like really good movies amidst, like, which is like, oh, that's good. But it's like, no, that's like really bad batting average. Why are people paying? You know what I mean? Like they just love the world, the stuff. Um, well, that's the thing. Like, like, like the necessity for supplemental media does not a good movie make. Like, yeah, you need, Master you Yoda? need it to like lean on itself <laughs> in like all these like intricate ways to make it stand up and, and be some, something good, which I think it does well, like like the like all the lore from all the different things well, leans about, on on itself to create this like cool, rich thing. But the problem is, is when you view each one individually, mm -hmm. sometimes like in the the situation of episode two, it does not hold up like yeah. uh, I think Lord of the Rings is a great example. Uh, there's a world where you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg when you watch those movies. If that, you know what I mean? There's. 95% of the lore and the things you could know about this world are not in those three movies. Mm -hmm. And you can go down a deep rabbit hole. Many people do because it's very fun, right? Mm -hmm. But the average, like you could get home from a hard day at the office and haven't watched a movie in 10 years and watch Fellowship of the Ring and understand completely what's going on and exactly. have a great time. Right. And because it, it stands on its own, you mm -hmm. know? And yeah. I don't think Star Wars, <clears throat> like to your point, does that very well. Because uh, I have through you and through like, being a content creator and just wanting to be prepared. I know a lot more about this universe than I would want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it does help. It is fun. Sure. You know, um, but that, I mean, do I have a list of all the trade Federation council members and what race and what companies they lead in my notes to discuss later on? Uh, I do. Uh, Cause that's <laughs> fun to get into as, for me <laughs> as a fantasy nerd, somebody who is like drawn <clears throat> maps and built entire worlds that would freak people out. If they saw, <laughs> what are you doing? Like banker clan and stuff like really annoys me. Like this was <laughs> minimal effort in this world building of this parts of this universe. Um, but I want to read one last thing. This is from Clara, Clara Curtis, who we hung out with at South by Southwest. I love Clara. Uh, one of the hosts of the house of cinema podcast. They are. And Clara's great. Wonderful. Almost genius level person. I, I think it's yes. fair to say. Uh, I so I was surprised and intrigued when I saw attack of the clones, four stars from Clara. Uh, and they start with a quote. It wasn't, I wasn't strong enough, but I promise I won't fail again. I miss you so much. And the crux of what they think works in this movie is what I find so fascinating, given what I know about Clara and what I know is that they are a brilliant person. <laughs> Attack of the Clones is one of the most obvious middle of the trilogy films out there if we're being blunt, but that doesn't detract from how much I enjoy it. Revenge of the Sith gets dark in more ways than one. And so to have a film like this, where there's surprisingly heavy emphasis on Anakin and Padme being cute and rolling around in meadows and eye fucking each other is a definite <laughs> moment of reprieve and preparation for what comes next. Y'all can complain all you want, but personally, I think Hayden Christensen conveys a young man's gradually disenfranchisement, gradual disenfranchisement from and subsequent anguish, anguish over a system he once believed to be the only way so impressively. The arrogant swagger, the bubbling just under the surface frustration that turns into outright rage, the almost naive mannerisms toward the first and only woman he's ever loved are all shown so clearly on screen. The monologue about how much he loves Padme and how it causes him anguish is a top tier young love profession for me. Uh, so I'm going to go on, but I just want to say, like, let this cook. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I love that take. Their theory is that it is not rapey and terrible and bad acting and bad writing. It is someone who's like 18 and obsessed over a person. And it's so cringe and so awful. And like anything you would have said at 18 about a person you loved would have been. Oh, thank God it's not filmed. You know what I mean? Like, cause you're just young. You don't know what's going on all these feelings and you're just embarrassing. You're, embar you're an embarrassing person. Yeah. And I kind of love that. I love that too. I think that's a really great point of view. Anakin is 19 and that shows not only in his weakness, but in his strengths as well. Anakin's newest chapter is one that is most definitely not at its qu best quite yet, but the illusion to what is to come is so satisfying to take in. Uh, basically it's a, you know, it's a buildup for revenge of the Sith. 
And then a bunch of love for Padme, which I, I, I this is my favorite part about this movie. Padme fighting that giant cat alien and running through the droid factory and shooting her blaster pistol. I love gorgeous, gorgeous girls who are senators of the planet <laughs> Naboo and refuse to cower in the face of assassins, gunfire or forbidden love. Uh, anyway, I think it's uh, it almost sold me. It didn't. But almost. I really love that review <laughs> and that take on the what transpires in this movie, because, again, like the. I, I feel like George was sitting in his bedroom and was like, when, when he's thinking this up, mm. he's like, you know, what if I kept the whole shtick I do where I take Oscar winning actors and I make it look like they have no idea what they're doing. And I write the worst <laughs> dialogue I could possibly think in. I, you know, like I keep that element of Phantom Menace, <clears throat> but then I just, I make it fucking hideous. What do you got? Just let me cook. You know, Hold on. <laughs> like, I want a scary monster. <laughs> oh, wait, three scary monsters. I I like that scene. So when I was a kid, I loved this movie. Yeah, oh, I yeah. was, uh, I don't know, how old was I? When, 13 when this came out, right? So I'm like obsessed with Natalie Portman. Uh, when he swipes her shirt, rips half of it off, that makes perfect sense to me, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. 47 Jedi I at see the same that time. <laughs> <laughs> God, 47 Jedi at the same time. Like you said, that was like mind blowing, right? Sure, yeah, I, I yeah. remember sitting in the theater. The scale was, was when bigger. Yoda fought Dooku <clears throat> and he's and then that played so well. People were standing and oh, screaming and clapping. Standing ovation when he and busted then, out that lightsaber. For when sure. he picks his cane back up and hobbles away afterward, everybody's dying laughing like this shit hit and it worked. It really did. Um, but yeah, watching it last night. It is uh, on every level, like the love story, like you said, is the crux does not work at all. And, and it's like it's borderline. It's it's upsetting the way that it comes off. Like you you want to get him away from her. Not only is like, I don't believe <laughs> yeah. I don't believe they're in love. You want to get her away from him. You know, when yeah. you're watching this, um, even my my beloved, you and McGregor, like he's got this like fake beard that looks bad. I, I think, think. He has beards. Beards real. Is it like, a, he, like he actually grew that? Beard. It looks like a glued on. It, it doesn't look good, but it's a real. beard. <laughs> <laughs> Not liking it. Uh, he's got a mullet. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And the whole dynamic. It, it, he looks like space Jesus. There's so many things about this. The world that I'm so curious about, like it's almost like Obi-Wan's fault. What happens to Anakin? Because he's such because he's holding him back. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> he's such a. Like he's like a bitch teacher, you know, yeah, like he doesn't parent. He doesn't put his foot down on anything at all. You know, like, well, he's, oh, he's like one of those yeah, moms so. that wants to be your best friend, but like not your actual mom. Like, like, oh, yeah, of exactly. You I know my, my parents, which look what happened to me. Like, I know you're like, I know we're not supposed to have romantic entanglements, but yeah, you can go hang out with the center that you've we'll been just in love buy with you buy you beer nine. and give you some weed, Anakin. So because we know you're going to do it anyway. At least you'll be safe in here. Like, that's what Obi-Wan is giving. Anakin, don't run over there. I'm going to run over there. Oh, this boy. There's that scene at the Anakin, beginning. Tisk, tisk. <laughs> There's a scene at the beginning of this movie where Anakin talks back majorly early, early on. You know, I forget in front of other people, in front of other people. Yeah. I forget the context. Oh, but he's he, like, what's when they meet uh, Padme and Jar Jar in her apartment? Yeah. Yes. And then he goes, uh, you will learn your place. You will listen to me. And he goes, why? And obviously he meant that. But then he like covers it. Uh, do you think for a second, what am I point I'm trying to make? Do you think for a second that Qui-Gon would have taken that shit the way Obi did? I don't need to go smack in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Cause also, given the red flag, like, he was already told he's too old to train. He's very yeah. dangerous. It's diabolically dangerous. Da, 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 da. And like giving those early warning signs. I don't know the whole bit about like this is the actual story of this, which makes it cooler, even though it's not shown, in my opinion, in the text. It does make it cooler that the Jedi were extremely arrogant and they, yeah. they were a yeah. corrupt system right. themselves. Yeah. So that's why they didn't sense that Darth Sidious was standing literally right in front of them. That's why they didn't sense, all. you know, like, sure. But like it is a little yeah. hard to stomach for me that they're just watching Anakin do all this shit and they're like, it's going to be fine. I think Qui-Gon would have been a better master to him because Qui-Gon yeah. himself was like a little bit of a rogue. Whereas Obi-Wan has always struck me as like a more like by the book guy. He's a nerd. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I feel like Qui-Gon would have handled that like. And it was the intention for Qui-Gon right to train him. So maybe that's part of the tragedy. Right. right? Like, but after we're like on our own, like I'm going to like, he, I bet you. Anakin would have respected him more than he respects Obi-Wan in, in this movie because like yeah. Qui-Gon is, to me. yeah, like, like Qui-Gon just had like an air about him that was like, 
you can say whatever you want to me, but like, you know, you're wrong. And when we're alone, like we're going to hash this out. Cause like, I get it. I've been there before. Like, I don't agree with what the Jedi do a lot, a, a lot of the time, but, um, I think he would have been a better foil to, and to Anakin than yeah. Obi-Wan was, mm-hmm. which is, which is yeah. actually great because that's why like that, that relationship ends eventually and, and becomes what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that is the tragedy because he would have been a better master. But the the thing is like, as this is also Obi-Wan's like, he just became a Jedi Knight. They're like, here, train the chosen one. Like he doesn't know how to, he's never trained anyone before, but also he's going to train this, like this very, (laughs) well, like a difficult case, like a kid that's too old technically to begin the training. So he's got to catch him up. Mm -hmm. And also like people are telling him he's the chosen one his whole life. And like, Oh, master, I'm pretty cool. He's from the mean streets of Tatooine. He talks about, you know, and and, and like, he's like, can I go save my mom? He's like, Anakin, no, we get over it. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's a really hard case. And it's just, it, it, it speaks more, poorly of the Jedi council just be like, all right, you can have them. Yeah. First, like why isn't like Kiati Mundi or Yoda or uh, Mace Windu would have been a terrible trainer for Anakin, but yeah, well, <laughs> cause they hate each other. But yeah, um, yeah it's just, but he, I feel like he's not going to say you know, half of that shit to Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> suffer. No fools. Learn your place. Young yeah. Skywalker. Yeah. I saved your mama. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> save the shit out of her. Um, so I, that's another thing. Like the power levels confuse me. We get to see in this, and I know we're going way too long before we even get into the meat, but I, I'm just upset. Uh, like we get to see crazy things happen in this movie where the Jedi are basically superheroes. You know, the things that uh, Anakin does when they're chasing Zam and things like, like he just jumps off the speeder and we yeah. get to see like the, Oh, he's the chosen one. Like he's OP as fuck. Yeah. At the end of the movie, he's not at all. He doesn't no. do any of that stuff. It bothers me. And you're thinking, oh, maybe they just well, can't do that kind of stuff on the ground. And then you see Mace Windu enter the gladiator uh, arena and he literally jumps like 400 feet, lands lightly on his on his feet and turns around, takes it. It's fucking badass. But I'm yeah. like, where was that energy yeah. when uh, Obi-Wan was fighting a <clears throat> fucking dork in a helmet early and like <laughs> losing? You yeah. know what I mean? I know you're trying to make Boba Fett look cool, but like he would not lose that fight for a, a moment. Fett. Well, Mandalorians come from a proud nation of people that fought Jedi all the time. He's not a real Mandalorian. That's true. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> um. But he, but he's like a, he's like a nerd. He's like a gun nut, like <laughs> he's a prepper. He's like, <laughs> I've been reading on, I've been doing my own research online. I think I can take him. I've been doing my own <laughs> research. Bubba, get the ship and shoot at him. Okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, like uh, now Anakin's struggling on a conveyor belt when earlier he was oh, dude, hopping I, between skyscrapers. Dude. I, uh, we'll get to it, but I fucking hate that conveyor belt scene with a passion. It's so funny to me because it's like. Your mandate is to protect me and I'm going. So you better come too. Oh, that's hot. Let's do this. I'm sorry. Literally, you would have died if it wasn't for R2. It had nothing like immediately doesn't protect her. (laughs) Okay. I'm not not crazy for that. Yeah. Let's get in. Let's get through this quickly. Yeah. Next week's actually a pretty good movie. As I recall, we'll see. I love Revenge of the Sith. Um, So this is Attack of the Clones 2002. My whole review can be summed up as hilariously unsubtle movie. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But we it's the opening crawl talks about where we're at in the story. Now, a bunch of solar systems have they want to leave the Republic. Uh, They're called the separatists and they're led by Count Dooku, who is a former Jedi, which is apparently an order that you can leave. Yeah. With your powers whenever you want. Yep. You know what I'm going to do? Fuck shit now. Yeah. Count Dooku is also. Mister, we will. He's also. (laughs) (laughs) Count Dooku is also like the, he's like a member of a very rich family on the planet called Sereno. And a Nepo he, baby. He's a, he is a Nepo <laughs> baby. He is. And he quits the Jedi order and basically becomes the leader of that planet. That's why he's the count of that planet. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. C- Christopher Lee is also one of the coolest people on the planet. He's such a cool motherfucker. He literally killed people, uh, fought in all kinds of like world war two battles, <clears throat> uh, did a bunch of crazy shit. And the reason his lightsaber looks the way it does is because he also knows how to sword fight. He's a, uh, fencer fencer that's and why he does the fencing salute in yes. all of his battles it's so cool and they he he asked for that custom lightsaber that is like uh curved the way that it like the sword that he's used to yeah, it's um, cool 
So that's neat. A lot of people asking for custom lightsabers in this movie because uh, Samuel Jackson wanted a purple lightsaber, mm-hmm. even though it had never happened before. And George Lucas like, oh, OK, <laughs> sure. Oh, he's the he's the one that thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I just he's like, I want people to be able to pick me out in a wide shot. There's basically. like a behind the scenes of I think like episode one or two um, before the movie came out. Uh, and he asks George on tape. And George is like, uh, like you can see him like, like, like the gears turning in his head. Like, uh, why would there be other colors? Yeah. Like, and, 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 and I believe that is why it, yeah. like from that moment that they got on tape up to this point, it was just green, blue, red. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, George Lucas is like, fuck, the camera's rolling. Uh, <laughs> shit. Okay. We also hear in this opening crawl that Amidala wants to create it, which she wants to stop the creation of an army. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the Senate has this vote that they're going to have to create an army for the Republic in case there's a war that breaks out between the Republic and the Separatists. And she's going to vote against it because she's all about that, like, you know, diplomacy, not no, no war. Little do they know they've already created an army mm-hmm. at the behest of. Master Siphodius. Siphodius. Sy- talking about Siphodius. Siphodius nuts, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Siphodius nuts. And Lord Tyrannus, which is actually Count Dooku. That's, yeah. his, that's his evil nickname. Yep. It's like when you get in this Sith gang, you get jumped in yeah. and they give you a new name. Yeah, you become, you become a Lord of the Sith, but then you're like, make sure you get a cool name. That's also like also a word for something mm. bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Maul, Tyrannus, Sidious, yeah. Invader. <laughs> Darth Hemroidus. <laughs> yeah, that's that. We all know Darth Hemroidus. That's mine. <laughs> uh, so the, the film opens with Amadala, Padme herself, heading to Coruscant. Uh, we see like, the back of her head, and we know she's sneaky, and she's always got body doubles, but we'll see. Uh, and then we get, uh, we meet, uh, what's his name? Gregor Ty- Typho? Typho. Her, 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 uh, her new captain of security? Whoa, <laughs> what happened there? I, don't know. I thought you were saying. Her, 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 her. <laughs> oh, no. I thought you were saying Star Wars names. No. His full name, Herner Herner. Herner 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 Herzog. I would like to see Padme. Um, so yes, he Did says. Did you know that this guy that plays Gregor Typho also plays a clone trooper? Like he's like the intermediary clones and in Camino. It's and you're just like that's obviously the guy I mean, that we just saw a couple hours I have, ago. I have I have thoughts about that, but we'll get to, we'll get to that point. If yes. I was George, I would throw everybody also in a helmet at certain points just to fill fill the shot out yeah, for sure. Just to fuck with them. Padme. Uh, but yeah, soon he turns to like his little buddy and says, "I guess I was wrong. No danger." And then <laughs> the entire ship explodes, and of course, Padme was one of the front guards, you know, and she was and one of the pilots. Yeah, She had her body double in the ship and it was uh, a little Corday. Poor Corday. I love she core dead. I love the course. <laughs> Got her. Corday is like, I failed you. And I, I literally laughed out loud. I was like, you did great. Yeah. You did your job. You did your job. <laughs> if you, you, they thought you were Amidala. Like you, that was your whole job. You died and she did mission accomplished. What does yeah. I failed you fucking mean? Like I, also, like she didn't cause the bomb. Right. It's what did she a, do? What did she do wrong? I, I'm, I know I'm nitpicking, but this is the kind of thing that makes or breaks it for me. And like, what does that line even mean? Yeah. Like, did you think about it's, it at all? No. I hate you. And then, uh, she, <laughs> and then she delivers that line, and then immediately goes. Yeah, it's the corniest. That's fine, but no, that uh, that that death is so fucking no, corny. I, and bad. I agree with Steve. The direction uh, was bad. I, I'm saying it's like a hat on a hat. At that point, you're there's so much else wrong that it's like sure, you know. <laughs> sure. Um, that is the least of the yeah. problems with this movie. Palpatine, like when Shmi dies later, does the same thing. Yes, yeah, Shmi does the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> Palpatine meets uh, with the Jedi, uh, and they they're positing different perpetrators that could have tried to attack Amidala. It couldn't possibly be the person that they let go that hated her in the last movie. No, it's obviously the spice miners from Naboo. It's got to be the spice miners. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Those rapscallions. You know how the Fremens are. Uh, (laughs) Also, Jar Jar is back. He is. He's a senator now. Yeah. In one of the few scenes, because they had to keep him in the movie and they're like, yeah, but they wouldn't have a senator because they're on the same planet of Naboo. He's a bomb bad war general. (laughs) Uh, Fun fact. Um, my wife walked down right as Jar Jar oh, no. was on screen where he, he was like, little lady. And I was just like, why does she pick the worst moments to ever walk in on me watching what, the movies? What was her reaction? I paused it immediately because I was like, <laughs> I don't want her to hear Jar Jar's voice. And, and then she. Misa busted the 
see you. She talked to me and then she went <laughs> she went upstairs and, and I like listened for her to like go all the way upstairs. And I was like, Why are you right, so play. ashamed of Star Wars? Because it's fucking Jar Jar. It's so bad. I, do, I just don't understand the dynamic. I don't want her to think less of me <laughs> before watching this. <laughs> She's never seen a movie before. She hasn't seen most movies. Star Wars, yeah. She, she doesn't, yeah. I find that fascinating. <laughs> Uh, Cause with, I understand what it's like when your wife walks down and there's yeah. like the kinds of movies that I sometimes watch, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like somebody getting spit roasted and I'm like, like yeah, that just, just yeah. happened. <laughs> it's not the whole thing's not like this. See the thing about their character. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to sit down and watch faces of death with me? <laughs> right. Um, but not Jar Jar. I'd be like, I'm proud of this. Well, but Amadala thinks it was Dooku uh, behind this attack. And they're like, the Jedi are so dumb. They're like, no way. Dooku used to be a Jedi. He's so cool. He's a political idealist, not a murderer. Literally, who has ever done anything bad with the Force? Like, girl, <laughs> girl. relax. <laughs> uh, which, again, I know is part of their arrogance, but he used to be a Jedi. He would never do that. Palpatine wants extra security for her. And watching these, what has been cool and what I think was kind of done well is watching these movies in my 30s, I see that the whole point is showing the puppet master that is Palpatine yeah. and how he would even use his own apprentices. He doesn't care about Dooku. He's going to, he's supposed to fall on the sword. He doesn't care yeah. about Maul. He's supposed to fall on the sword. Yeah. He was our, uh, Dooku was already apprentice. The Viceroy was fell. supposed to fall on the sword. And so he's laid this groundwork and he, so he wanted, uh, 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 what's his name? Anakin to fall in love with Padme. So he wants to get them together. That's why he needs extra security. I know who's going to do it. And at every turn, and he's been like, you're so cool, Anakin. I wish people would just let you be free and make your own decisions the yeah. whole time, right? Like, which is obvious, but th I think that part was done well. Yeah, the Palpatine of it all is is done. That is pretty like well throughout. One the of the only movie. strengths of this movie is 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 that is that part of it the the back background working all the people like all the pawns into the right place places that is I, I, like i that that was the part that like i think people complained about like oh it's, oh it's so bore oh it's so boring with all these political things in this yeah. movie but now i'm like that's a part that it's like the best part yeah, of this is, trilogy. Yeah. the only good thing about this movie the political stuff in the movie is the best part and it is funny how I mean, quickly, it's not that deep but like still it's like good yeah it's kind yeah. of funny yeah. and bad how quickly people just willingly yeah. give up their liberty but at right. the same time i think that's part of that's the how, critique of how society is that's how yeah. liberty dies that's right baby with thunderous applause Ooh, you should it's write that down from a committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he decides that Kenobi and his new Padawan will be her security detail. And she's like, oh, I do like them. Spe speaking of uh, something that Phil said earlier about the unnecessary CGI sets, the, the Palpatine, there, there are several times. So I was watching this with Erica and there were several times where like a, a, like a, it was usually establishing shot of wherever they are. I would just say. Here, let's walk down this totally real hallway. <laughs> Come, let's walk down this totally real place. And the, the Palpatine's office is in this movie is so bad. Is so bad. Him with the red floor and the red walls. Yeah. And it's a shame because I'm pretty sure his office is practical in episode three and it looks fucking great. Yeah. And so in this movie, it's like, what are they thinking? It was blowing my mind how bad this movie looked. It like every scene was like, oh my God, like you couldn't have a carp like a single carpet in this room <laughs> like you had to cgi that too well you this watched it on like on laser disc on a boat for some reason <laughs> no, yeah. Dude, but i mean still disc, like it would have looked great on laser disc <laughs> <laughs> it but does look fucking he was, he was on a beta it, tape it looks so bad i was like god like they spent no money at all like there's on the, the, set. the picnic scene they for some reason have this like super fake looking giant waterfalls in yeah. the back. like why'd you put Waterfalls and like, why are they at Niagara Falls having this picnic? Like, yeah. She said, let's go to my lake house. Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> <laughs> Just stick to the, Anakin, stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Exactly. Okay. Right. Yeah. God, I've been telling you this for years. <laughs> uh, but Anakin hasn't been this tense since they fell in that nest of Gundarks because he's nervous about meeting Padme again. Uh, and yay, more Jar Jar. Looky, looky. Misa Bustin. <laughs> this was the scene that she walked in on. Misa yeah. Bustin with happiness. I love <laughs> It's my favorite line in Star Wars ever now. Bustin makes me so feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and Anakin hits her with the Riz immediately, just like when he was a kid. Like, he's just like, what's up, girl? Immediately. Like, she's it's like, so Ma weird. I don't she's know like, if it's even Riz. It's like some weird. It's a Riz attempt. Yeah. It's it's total Anakin Riz, because she's like, Annie, my how you've grown. And she's like, and how you've grown more, more beautiful, I mean. Exactly. 
and and you can see Obi Wan. <laughs> What's funny about I said this earlier about him being a bad master, but Obi Wan is like. It's adorable. I don't think it's helpful to keeping him from being evil, but it's adorable that he supports him, even though it's super red flaggy for how it's supposed to be for a Jedi. Like in yeah. the scene where he's like, she was excited to see us. Like he should be shutting that shit down immediately. Like, yeah. why do you care, stoic and warrior of justice? This is the thing. That, <laughs> right. This is the thing that I think the movie also fails in. That the Clone Wars, the TV show, does a really great job of establishing, and even it's pretty well established in Revenge of the Sith as well. But this movie is really bad at establishing that the relationship that Obi Wan and Anakin have, even though Anakin's like, "You're the closest thing I have to a father, Master." They're really <laughs> brothers. Like that's right. supposed yeah. to be the relationship. Is like. Older brother helping out little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, the show is really his dad bring died. Bring that to life, and like they have like a, a much more casual and un, unprofessional relationship that they have to other Jedi. And Obi Wan, even though he's this rule follower, his master was a rogue. So he, I think it's just he sees a little bit of his master in Anakin. So he likes having that person that he can just let his beard down with mm. and uh, <laughs> his very real beard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a few, it, it looked better in the, the later half of the movie. Uh, uh, but when you first see it, when they're fighting Zam and stuff, I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry. But yeah, they're supposed to be brothers. And I wish they kind of conveyed that relationship a little bit more. And the writing is a little bit in there. Like his whole, like she was happy to see us, bro. Like you got, you got a yeah. G. Yeah. That's my guy. <clears throat> it's a little bit in there, but I think they haven't, like the script definitely needed way more drafts, but I think if they had like punched the script up a little bit, they would have hammered that relationship home a bit. Yeah. This, in this movie, I love the politics, but I, I, I love Padme, not with her scenes with Anakin, but like that she gets to kind of kick ass. And I, yeah. I love Obi-Wan just because yeah. he's Obi-Wan. Like uh, we have came to rescue you, master. Good job. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's fun. Have you seen that? Uh, I guess it's a prank that a lot of, young people do on their grandparents where they replace this is the best thing about it. episode two they replace the photo or whatever photo the, the grandparents have of jesus in their home with a photo of obi-wan from episode two and <laughs> yeah, just to yes. see how long it takes them to notice that that's not jesus it's mm -hmm. obi-wan i mean is it that's true i mean that's he's my jesus <laughs> one could argue uh but yeah this is where he loses his place and anakin kind of talks back to obi-wan extremely in front of other people it's very unprofessional it's very uncomfortable um Padme hits Anakin Investigation with... Investigation is implied in our mandate. Padme hits Anakin with a line that I'm sure fucking wrecks him. And it's kind of hilarious to watch where she goes like, you'll always be that little boy I knew on Tatooine. And, and then turns and walks away. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'll show you. Ugh, I'll show you how much I've grown. <laughs> uh, so then we see uh, the assassin Zam reporting to Mr. Fett. Um... And basically, like, try again, seriously, this time. <laughs> is, the, is the conversation there. You gave her some poison slugs. I gotta be serious. Don't fuck up. <laughs> I'll, I'll shoot you with a dart. That's embarrassing for the world with lasers, okay? I'll shoot you with a fucking dart. <laughs> okay? And it's gonna be real embarrassing for you. The first line we get when Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin meet again is outside of Padme's bedroom. And it's Anakin saying, I don't think she'd like me watching her. Uh, yeah. like it's just <laughs> they're, the dynamic they're setting up, which actually in the context of this scene, and I know we, I'm determined to do this faster than we've done the last four episodes, but <laughs> in the dynamic of this scene, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Cause he's actually planned this out with Padme that she's agreed to be bait, all this stuff. Right. Yeah. So why does it start with him being like, I don't know why she turned off her cameras. <laughs> like, yeah. like you're just making him look creepy. In a way that doesn't actually even make sense because they've planned this all out there. You know what I mean? It, it yeah, pisses yeah. me off. Um, yeah, you're doing the character no justice no. here yeah, at all. Like it, it doesn't actually make sense for the dynamic of what's actually going on. But so they've agreed to use her as bait, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, again, they, they get that brotherly competition because it's like, don't worry, I can sense everything going on in that room. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think your senses are attuned enough for that. And yours are? Probably like, um, it, you know, it's possibly. not, it's not master apprentice interactions at all, which like yeah, you're yeah, saying is right. intentional. And I don't have that background knowledge, but it's weird to me. And then, and then another mistake <clears throat> that Obi-Wan does is uh, Anakin's like you have, or Anakin says he hasn't been sleeping well because he's having dreams about his mother. And Obi-Wan's like dreams pass in time. Like <laughs> you guys foresee the fucking future. What in dreams? What in what world? We'd be like, hey, you're probably just staying up too late drinking Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's upsetting the brain. Well, not only that, but his attention to his mother and fear of losing her was one of the biggest red flags as a boy when he was being appraised by Yoda. Yeah. 
I don't know. It just seems like something they could they should probably look into more to prevent what's coming. Yeah. You know? If this is the chosen one, maybe go free her from slavery and set her up in a really safe place and just just to give him the peace of mind that she's okay. Yeah. I mean, like ten years have gone by at this point. Like they haven't gone back at all during that time to like check in on her and like figure that like loose end. Yeah. Like I'm, there might be some like expanding universe book or comic book where they did, but still, you're to your point. Like it's like why haven't they? Yeah. Addressed she's this issue? just sitting in the desert. Sweating under Klieg uh, <laughs> was the highlight of her life. Hey, me. <laughs> and like, I'm sure like he's talked about you her during that moisture time. farm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, want to help me make some moisture? <laughs> <laughs> this is my son, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, he's and here. His, and his girlfriend, Baru. <laughs> Let's bump uglies and drink some blue milk. Um... <laughs> Yeah, he's not sleeping well. He's he's having dreams of mommy. And then, and then he's like, I'd rather dream about Padme. <laughs> like, Stop, dude. Um, and then he's like, plus she's a Republican. Because uh, <laughs> they're arguing about politicians, but I thought it was funny that she believes in the Republic so much, which <clears throat> makes her Republican. Uh, yeah, and then the assassin drone comes in. It sends in some slugs. R2 is just beep booping around. He's useless. And yeah. uh, I do like that their powers are so attuned like this is you, again you get hints of how crazy op these guys are supposed to be yeah they just turn it off whenever it fits the narrative better for them yeah, to be right. inept and it pisses me off uh and i'm really excited for the acolyte to see like some just straight up like godlike people with lightsabers that's not what i hope that i get um but and then in this dialogue where they're arguing about politicians there's a funny line where uh, Anakin goes. The Chancellor seems cool. I know. That. I know that <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, he's, <laughs> he's got my vote. He's, he's a stand-up guy. Yeah. I feel like we could have a beer with him. <laughs> <laughs> People are saying there's a clone <laughs> army. Oh my God. Can you imagine if Palpatine was like played by Donald Trump? That would be so funny. If only Senator Amidala were here. Uh, she would vote Count for me Dooku, to- Count Dooku, I call him <laughs> Little Count. <laughs> Not as rich as me. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> but he's- Jar Jar Binks, Big Bombad General. We love Jar Jar. <laughs> big Bombad General. Bigly Bombad. He's voting to build the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Very brave of him. Uh, Anakin jumps in and sabers the slugs, which I thought was, as a kid- so cool because it's it's such a precise movement oh, yeah. with yeah, the saber. Gotta, They're tiny yeah. slugs. He can't hurt Padme, but he doesn't even hesitate. <clears throat> it's just easy as fuck. Yeah. Again, that's what I mean about like, oh, this is cool. Um, <laughs> and then Obi Wan dives face first through a <laughs> yeah. plate glass window. Yeah, that's got to be a very thick window because it's high up. Yeah. Very thick window. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop. Help me. Um, by the way, that drone can hold some weight is what I was thinking. Yeah. Like it's not designed for that, but it does it easily. Yeah. And then Zam <clears throat> shoots the drone out of it. And this is what I mean about like the superhero level, because this is like watching this scene is suddenly like watching the Avengers operate. You know, you, you could see Hawkeye and Iron Man doing this. Yeah. And the banter that happens here. It's almost the same. You know what I mean? Like with when when the fact that Anakin just happens to be driving the speeder and catches and Kenobi was never fearful that Anakin wouldn't have his back. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, I'll be fine. I'm falling thousands of feet. Gravity means nothing to Jedi. I'll be fine. Imagine if Zam had aimed like a foot lower. Why didn't she just shoot him? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) It's one of those, they cut to Zam. It's like, I was aiming for his head. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then yes, they're in the speeder together and, uh, I think it's funny that like he's if you focused enough on your saber skills, you'd rival master Yoda. And Anakin's like, I do, don't I? And he's like, only in your mind. And they have that whole banter. But Anakin's That's like check laughing. Check like off a, Yoda saber fights. <laughs> he's laughing like a dum dum. It's supposed to show that he, he, he's kind of an adrenaline junkie, but it's, <laughs> it's so bad. We get a power coupling callback. Oh my God, the power coupling is so <clears throat> dorky. <laughs> what does it even do? I don't know. There's just a random like electricity that they fly through. And like, Purple light. I've and told you to avoid around. these. But he's not the one that got caught in it. It was Jar Jar. So the callback is, it's, <laughs> it's a non sequitur, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> Anyway, uh, there's a shortcut, I think. So Anakin stops the speeder in his shortcut. And I hate the whole idea that he's just not going to tell Kenobi. Like, 
they're down there and I'm going to jump. Like it, it would make my, way I more know. sense for him to just be like, I hate it when movies do do this. Yeah. It doesn't like, make any it sense. It takes like a second to just explain it. Excuse and, me, master. Yeah. And everyone hate hates it when he does that. I hate it when yeah. he does it. He does that every, every time we've, we'd ride a speeder, he <clears> jumps out bitch. of it. <laughs> <laughs> so he jumps on Zam's boat. <laughs> and oh, I, by the way, I love the sound that Zam's boat makes. <laughs> <laughs> that, woo. Yeah. Yeah, what if it went, yippee, <laughs> <laughs> wizard. I, I would love it even more. Why does Anakin turn his saber on after all this cool shit? He just shoves his saber in there and starts waving it around. <laughs> and doesn't hit her. <laughs> and then it loses it. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Also, um, like she like refuses to do like a barrel roll, which would have solved the whole problem. Yeah. I do like the sound design there. It's like, meow. And well, that's the thing you can always say about these movies is the sound design and the score is always... 10 out of 10. Yes. Um, so anyway, they crash. It turns into a, it, it's the, the crash looks horrible. Like the, when the, <laughs> yeah. when her boat hits <laughs> the well, wall and it crumples. It's, it's, it's so bad. It's yeah. weird. The physics are even wrong because the way it lands, it's a soft landing implying like, Oh, you can survive that. But then like when it gets the wall, it'll like, <laughs> like it like speeds up for a second. So it looks, Oh, she didn't survive that. Oh wait, she did. They're fine. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of, you know, crash testing done you know this isn't a tesla this she, is a honda did she morph into an airbag and then morph back into a person then maybe <laughs> is that what happened maybe yeah maybe it's like a DD creature it turns into like that treasure chest with the tongue <laughs> uh, uh you did like the moment where like calm. she looks up at him and like loses the like guys yeah you could see the that real scene stands out of my mind from when i was a kid like the ball was crap. cool yeah i always uh it shocked me so kenobi chastises uh anakin and says you're gonna be the death of me Ooh, oh foreshadowing oh uh and then there's like he's not the, he's not trying to run he's trying to hide you need to chill out don't lose your saber these are super important ah this saber is your life yes it's frustrating master. sleep with it cuddle it kiss it yes master <laughs> and then anakin's like he's a she and a changeling uh and then anakin helps the life of a drug dealer Obi Wan helps the life of the yeah, company. which is nice. You want to buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to buy some. Can death sticks. you imagine what that guy's name name is? Chris? Oh my god! Get, yeah, Jizz Hardo. Close. <laughs> it is actually kind of close. What? Elon. What? Or Elam or Elon? Uh, it's Elam Sleza Bagano. Oh, he's Sleza a Bagano. Bag. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Just, not anymore. He's going to go home and think about his life. Maybe. Well, I wish we could see a whole many series about Sleaze of Agano's life where yeah. he just goes home after this moment and goes back to school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to finally do it. I'm going <laughs> to get my business degree and open up a shop. He just goes to Hogwarts. And we also get um, a cameo by Ahmed Best in this scene. He's at the bar. Oh, he's just sitting there drinking because yeah. everybody's making fun he's of him. He's like dressed in blue, right? <laughs> uh, I don't remember, to be honest. This So this, this club scene kind of infuriates me because... Can you imagine uh -huh. how good the scene would have been if they're like, okay, there's a bounty hunter, an assassin mm -hmm. who can change shape and form <laughs> and become different people, goes into a crowded nightclub and we have to find them. And they just yeah. stays themselves. And yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't understand this at all. She literally just walks up. Hey, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> she goes up with a gun, like to his back. Like you have a fucking gun. Mm -hmm. Shoot him from across across a room. Like, don't yeah. be within lightsabering range. Mm -hmm. You could have literally had Sleeza Bagano come back, like, hey, I thought more about those death sticks, but it's, it's actually her. her. Like yeah. she took the form of him. Like, but they do nothing with it. Like no. they they posit this really interesting high stakes tension situation yeah. and then do nothing. That's true. Like, I do like that it's it shows how Anakin is more powerful, but Obi-Wan is better at using his abilities in this scene. Yeah. Like he calms him down. He goes and he just has a drink and waits because because he, he can sense. Whoosh, you know, it's it's executed poorly, but the idea, like again, and it's, Star Wars is just <clears throat> in, a, in a nutshell, great ideas executed poorly. Yeah, um, you know, Obi Wan disarming a person in a bar. It's like poetry. It rhymes, you know, because mm. he does that in A New Hope. <laughs> Three Jedi walk into a bar. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Anakin is the most powerful, like you said, but he he's untrained. He's over twenty thousand midi chlorians. Yeah, it's, it's, it's off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> so he cuts her hand off. I love the scene because it makes it seem like for a second this movie becomes something I would love to see, and it's like this. A, a dirty noir film mm -hmm. uh, like LA Confidential or something and, and cuts to Anakin and he goes Jedi business back to your drinks and like I fucking love that like I'd yeah. love to see that like corrupt Jedi edits <clears throat> you know, it, 
late stage republic. <laughs> late stage republic. <laughs> and then we get uh, a line that's not translated from uh, Zam. We shun it Slimo right before the bounty hunter kills well, her. Slimo is a, is a sl- slime ball basically. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. But we, so you don't know what we shun eat. It means no, probably like suck it. Slime, a uh, slime bag. Eat this dick. Slime ball. <laughs> Ow, my fucking arm. But before the, <laughs> the bounty hunter tells uh, them, or the bounty hunter kills her before she's able to tell the Jedi who she's working for. And uh, yeah, we cut to yeah, Yoda. Anakin, Anakin tries to bad copper first. Cause like, tell us now you can see some of the anger boiling out. You're supposed to be able to see that, but with that performance, it just, it's so whiny and silly at all times. And, but again, it, it cuts to Obi Wan, and Obi Wan's like, "Damn, dude, I mean, Re- chill." Re- <laughs> Negotiations were short. <laughs> Yoda, I'm, go- I'm going back to the bar for a drink. Yoda, wise millennial old millennium old master that he is, uh, splits them up and leaves Anakin to protect Amidala, just as Palpatine would like, and sends Obi Wan off. And it's silly to me. He and gets to go on vacation with her. Yeah, like he gets to go on vacation with his crush. Mm-hmm. Vacation, his, all I ever wanted. <laughs> you have like the easiest, best job in the world, man. Don't mess this up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, but yeah, but <laughs> Mace would do. Go as refugees. Like, <laughs> yeah, wow. Is, Na- is Naboo getting a lot of refugees? Oh my god! What the hell? Yeah. Uh, Palpatine it tells Anakin, "I've got your back, bro. You're so cool, by the way. Don't worry. Everybody can't see how cool you are, but I can. I see it." I think you should be captain of the football team. It's just me. That's fine at my way. <laughs> uh, and then Kenobi uh, seeks advice from Mace and Yoda uh, about Anakin and other things, saying that he's, he's super arrogant. And this is where Yoda, a flaw more and more common among Jedi, you know. Mm. <laughs> Back in my day. Maybe that speaks poorly on us. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, the trainers. I do like in the scene that that's one of the worst scenes in the entire movie. <laughs> there is a cool bit where the robots are fixing the window in the background. I wrote that yeah. down. Yeah. 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 I, I like, I, I like that. They like did that small detail, like as the a stab establishing yeah. shot of that scene. It's really I, cool. I also like Padme's suitcase. I think it's neat. Yeah. I Everything also, else about the scene is one also, of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. I like yeah. her hair. Cause it's giving it's tie fighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little Leia esque. Yeah. yeah. She looks like she's she's got a tie fire head, fighter head. There's a line that he does in this where he's like he he doesn't understand, and it's just it it hits me every time in the worst worst way. I'm not just like, like God, like you couldn't do another take of that one line, really. It's like, not only that; the whole premise of this scene is ass because like you've got this guy, <laughs> you got this kid who really wants to prove himself to be a, a professional, yeah. and he hasn't seen this this girl who he has a huge crush on in yeah. 10 years and he chooses their first interaction alone to go the fuck off in a way that it makes her obviously extremely uncomfortable. Red flags. Yeah. yeah. Like he, he might as well punch yeah. a hole in the drywall. Major and a monster. Insult vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, it's, and again, like, like I said before, Padme's reaction is like appropriate. Cause every, yeah, like, she's just like, uh, it's so funny. Cause he's, <laughs> he's bitching about Obi-Wan. And it cuts to her pack in her bags. Like, are we still talking about this? Yeah. <laughs> Can I'm, you not in the other so room? Maybe weird. I'm a hugely important political emissary who keeps evading death narrowly and you're supposed to protect me and you're I thought the whining the, the relationship was <laughs> you're protecting me, not me babysitting you. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, you big baby. It's yeah. wild. Uh, yeah. And then she he's like, God, dude, I love that ass. And she's like, <laughs> that makes me extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> and he's like, can't help it. <laughs> like, and then it cuts. I know. It's crazy. Oh! It's crazy. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear you down. Ew. That's not the message you want to send. Yeah, I know. What I the know. hell? It's and, so fucking And it cuts to the wild. train. She's got another body double uh, named Dorme who like weeps for her. And we don't know who this do, lady is, so do it doesn't all work. Of, to, is, to like get a job as Padme's <laughs> handmaids or like the all, body doubles is you have to have an, a name that ends with A? Because yeah. there's... You also have to be willing Padme, to die. Padme, Corday, Sabe. Yeah. What was this one's Dorme? I, I, I do. It, it says a lot about who Padme is as a person that they all love her so much and they're so willing to die. But also, like, how much does that job pay? Like, yeah, well, applying for Padme Handmaiden has got to be. Yeah. Like the resume is like need to be beautiful. Yeah. Look kind of like me. Yeah. It almost willing feels to like get a cult. blown up. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, they all wear handmaiden robes. They're yeah. called handmaidens. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it feels a little cult culty here. And then anime or anime. Anime. <laughs> anime is the other one. <laughs> this episode was sponsored by Better Help. Folks, it's 2024. What does everybody do in the new year? They make resolutions. They set goals. How about we don't do that? I mean, you can. It's obviously nice to have goals, but it's also a good exercise to focus on things that you like about yourself. You know, not making all those high pressure goals that you might fail at and just feel worse. You can set smaller goals. And I think therapy can be a good way to access things that you enjoy about your life and focusing on the positive, the gratitude. And BetterHelp is a good way to do that. If you've never given BetterHelp a try, it's therapy that's entirely online. You can do it all from your home and access a therapist by filling out a questionnaire. And if you end up not liking that therapist, you can switch again, along with the theme of this ad, uh, no pressure whatsoever. They're not going to have their feelings hurt by it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash streaming things. Spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Sven. 7, Jay Scramo, Bloth Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things, and let's get back to the show. We got to fucking Dex at the diner. Dexter I, Jetster. I actually like this scene. This is a good scene, I think. And the context here is that Obi-Wan has not been able to find the origins of the dart because the, you know, <clears throat> the Camino has been hidden from the archives yes, by, sir. I presume, Dooku? Yes. Uh, and so, yes, yeah. <laughs> actually, I, I highly recommend, I've talked about this before, but I highly recommend people check out the episode of tales of the Jedi on Disney plus. Uh, it talks about, th- uh, it, it takes place the day Qui-Gon Jinn dies. And yeah, uh, apparently Dooku like, de- well, Dooku deleted Kamino off of the, the archives the day that, uh, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan and Anakin come to the council for the first time. Mm. And then the rest of the episode is the day Qui-Gon dies. And it's Dooku dealing with the fact that his apprentice is dead. Oh, and it's sadly. actually like, it's a really good episode. Hmm. Does Dex ever come back? Is he in any of the like uh, Kenobi shows or anything? Uh, I don't, he's not in the Kenobi show. I feel like it'd be good to put him in Andor. Like that'd be so fun. I feel like he might've popped up in a Clone Wars episode. Like Obi-Wan went back whatever episode they were talking just for about a burger. just be like hey dex i want the triple <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what do you know i'm gonna rub my butt and then make a burger <laughs> but it's a camino saber dart he says camino. uh because he's wise not just knowledgeable one of them cloner i love this like i love the art design of this space like it just looks so the fun space to be diner in. yeah yeah it just it looks little fun. space mil- blue milkshake yeah i love the uh the droid that's like what do you want honey you want a cup of joe jawa juice jawa juice yeah. that's right <laughs> Ew. Ew. i don't Ew. i don't want jawa juice yeah. so teeny uh <laughs> So he says it's a place beyond the outer rim. It's 12 parsecs away. This is Lucas. Like, I do know what parsecs are yeah. correcting it, maybe, because yeah. this is parsecs as distance instead yeah. of speed. Speed, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I love this line where he's like, are they going to welcome me? And he's like, it depends on your manners and how big your pocketbook is. Pocketbook Pocket is. Yeah. I thought you were going to say dick. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was going to be very upset because they were not going to like me. I just De- like the design of Dex, too. Like, he's got those four four arms. He's a he's friendly got the mustache. Goro. He's got the nose ring. Yeah. Like, he's got that, like... He's got a mustache. Or, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. Um, he's got that, like, shell head. Like, uh, what, what's, the spe- uh, what's the species in Mass Effect? Um, Turian? Uh, or, uh, no, uh, 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 Krogan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Krogan. Yeah, but uh, Dexter is a bes- Besilisk, I think is how you pronounce it. Mm. A Besilisk. One of the best Clone Wars episode is about a Jedi Master Besilisk. So he has like 
two double bladed lightsabers that he can spin around with his oh. forearms, and it's it's rad. Does he hold like the other two arms like behind his back? <laughs> uh, no, he kind of. Okay. Well, Grievous has yeah. four, so yeah, it's pretty sick. Sweet, Just saying. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good one. Uh, so then Kenobi goes to the library <laughs> that Google wasn't around yet. Wasn't full swing. He was going to go ask Jeeves about Camino, and the librarian's <laughs> like, like if "It's not in the archives. It doesn't exist, motherfucker." Jocasta knew is like, "Oh, if we, just, if, if we don't have it in our library, then it's just not knowledge." <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. don't come up with me about fake shit. <laughs> the CGI on this library scene looks like an FMV cut scene from a computer game from 1999 <laughs> it looks so bad like you like a command and conquer yes cut scene. god it looks so bad <laughs> i don't remember this movie looking this bad but uh, did you notice in the scene when he's in the library talking to jacasta new like it starts i think the scene starts off with a shot of like some a, a jedi bust it's a bust of count dooku mm. and all of the bust other makes me so feel good <laughs> all the other busts in the library are actually busts of jedi who left the jedi order mm. And I forget the 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 lore reason why they made busts of Jedi who left the Order in their archives, but Jar Jar they, made them. There. It's like you can't put somebody on your money until they die. You kind of yeah. you, you can't make a bust until they leave your mm, Order and right. say it's shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that's why when Jedi die, they go, "I'm fitting a bust," <laughs> and then they become clothes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they become clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut to Anakin uh, at dinner with Padme, and he's basically professing his love to her and she's like, I <clears throat> thought you couldn't fall in love. And I do, I think this line is decent, all things considered where, you know, no attachment and possession are forbidden, but compassion for all beings is encouraged. And so in a way love is encouraged. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. And then he goes, <laughs> he ruins it. You look the same as in my dreams, <laughs> except uh, more clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that, again, Anakin, I can't stress enough that I don't like that kind of talk. It's yeah. extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. I hate that you're sexualizing <laughs> constantly. <laughs> like I, the way you're just looking at me yeah. is awful. And it cuts yeah. to a close up of him, just like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he basically, like every time they basically. cut to him looking at her, she, he's always doing this. It's yeah, weird. yeah, it's ugh. And then we cut to Yoda with the the younglings, and uh, mm. this this scene is almost awesome because it's like lost a planet, Master Obi Wan, huh? and all the How kids are like, embarrassing. <laughs> I love that. Truly wonderful, the mind of a child is. That doesn't make any sense because I love it. It's like the whole premise of the scene is cool. It's like the kid would think of it out of the box, and it would like make Yoda like whimsical. It's it's back but to the, the core. But the thing the kid thinks it's the about. obvious answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, shit. Someone erased it from the archives. <laughs> <laughs> Truly wonderful. The mu- That's well, the e- obvious answer. Well, even then, like, Obi-Wan goes, it should be here. Gravitational pull is still happening, but there's no planet. And then the kid's like, well, it's still there. Someone just deleted it. Oh, why didn't I think about <laughs> just going to where the gravity is working? Oh, my God. Holy shit. But only a Jedi could do that. I low-key love this. But who? This, like. And this why? like star map they have here too. It's like so cool. Like the way they yeah. just put that ball on that 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 post and it just just like bursts out from it. I also love it's that really when cool. Obi Wan is walking away, he like levitates it to him yeah, instead yeah. of picking. Because I it's if so I was cool. a Jedi, that's how I would oh, do yeah. everything. Oh yeah, yeah, I'd be taking a shit and just like a force pull the toilet paper to me that I can wow, definitely I'm glad reach. You said that. Uh, yeah, I, I thought <laughs> I would have been force pulling the turds out of me. Like, I I that's what you that's where you were going. <laughs> It's like, damn, dude. <laughs> wow. Got weird. But you're right. If I was a Jedi, I'm not bending over to pick no. anything up ever again. No. I would be, I would look like one of the dudes from Wally with my Jedi powers. <laughs> <laughs> just be on the couch, yeah. force pulling the remote and the soda. Get a cup and yeah. Just like I could walk upstairs or I could just levitate myself up the stairs. Yeah. It's like those people that buy Kindles and then they put the Kindle on a tripod and buy one of yeah. those things that will turn the page for them yeah. with a clicker. Yeah. Why Come you on, guys. why you Dragon Andy like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we cut to Amadala talking shit about her uh, political career, basically. Right. And then uh, we find out Newt Gunray is still the viceroy. Oh, my God. You remembered his name. I was wow. going to put you. I was going to test you when we got to him. If you remember Newt Gunray, Newt Gunray's baby. name. That's why I needed to know his name. I didn't even remember he, that he came back. What did he say his name was last night? Like, Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better name. <laughs> She's not serving. Um, and we get this scene where she shits on him in the same way where 
he 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 says to he has an idea, right? Like, who, what's the guy's name? The governor? C.O. Bibble. C.O. Bibble's like, Anakin, what should we do, Mr. Jedi? And she's like, oh, Anakin's not a Jedi. Here's what we should do. And obviously, he's already sensitive. He's a he's a real Kyle. So that's that's a, he's up back in the background chugging his monster like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many victory royales I've gotten on Fortnite? <laughs> Respect me. <laughs> Like seven this week. During the meeting with Queen Jamila the whole time, he's he's that meme where he's like drinking, like they don't even know how many wins I have in Fortnite. <laughs> they don't even know. Yeah. I don't even play no build because I'm not a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they start to butt heads and it's really awkward. Uh, Excuse me. I love that. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm in charge of your security on the planet I grew up on. Anyway, we cut to Obi-Wan. He finds planet Kamino with R4. <clears throat> and uh, the, Awful. Pr the prime minister there is expecting him. Ooh, Lama Su, what's up? That's weird. Uh, he goes along with it. And they talk about how Master Sifo Dias made the order <laughs> for an army. And I built them. And here they are. And I assume you're here to check on them. It's been a long time. Lama Su cannot take a hint this entire conversation. He's like explaining like about the army and like Obi and like Obi-Wan is so obviously not clued into any of this and Lamasu does not pick up on any of that. I don't think Lamasu cares. Like I've been paid by your order. I, I, I feel like there's a scene where like when Obi-Wan leaves Lamasu and Tan Wee, Lamasu's like the Jedi really don't have their shit together, <laughs> do they? That's like the whole time I'm just like, did Lamasu never stop to think like, maybe I shouldn't be giving all of this like very sensitive information to this guy who clearly knows nothing about this. So why didn't Dooku come pick up his army and then have the droids and the clones and fuck everything I up? I think he was waiting for them to mature more. Well, I think Palpatine always envisioned a civil war because that weakens both sides. Yeah, that Palpatine eliminates... obviously wanted the clones to be voted in to be used by the Republic, quote yeah, unquote, and, and all that. And Dooku's in on that plan. Like he knows that's part of it, that the Trade Federation and the Commerce Guild and all those all the separatist dudes are going to get wiped out and so that they can eliminate all that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um but apparently, I think in lore reason, Sifo Dias, uh, the actual lore, Master Sifo Dias actually had a vision of the future of there being a war and the Republic would need clones. So he put in the order and then Palpatine got wind of it, was like, oh, shit, uh, great idea, dude, and had him killed. And and Dooku is the one that Master covered it up. Sifo Dias was killed over 10 years ago. Oh, <laughs> how sad. We should have called him <laughs> at least once. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it sure would have sucked if this guy came, <laughs> ordered us to make all these clones. We do it for ten years, and then he never showed up to pay. <laughs> well, maybe I, mean, I bet he paid in advance. He probably did. Yeah. Pay. Where we'll do just, you get all that money? Honestly, Django's pretty cool, and we have thousands of Django's to party with. Yeah, even though the clones themselves don't look identical to him in the scene, <laughs> like, they're not they old like, enough yet. But That's they're like men, <laughs> like you like see yeah, like it's weird. they're like full grown men, but they don't look like him. We're just normal men, <laughs> innocent <laughs> men, just innocent. Men. I look a lot different than I did at twenty. <laughs> That's guess. true. You have less hair. <laughs> Wait, uh, yeah. So the the clones are played by um, Daniel Logan is the small like Boba Fett, mm -hmm. like little baby clones. Boba. Uh, Boba T. What's the other guy's name who plays Typho? Is it Jay Carl L Lugaya? Mm. Maybe uh, the, he plays like the intermediate <clears throat> clone. Like the, there's that shot of him. Like at, there's a, a shot of clones that like, I assume the, the cafeteria yeah. and he's just going, Oh, they served pot pie again. Like yeah. he's just making a little grimace, but they're and happy to do that. They just, they're like the uh, unsullied in game of Thrones, basically. Kind of. You no. Know? Yeah. Uh, Annie and Padme reach the lake house. Uh, this is where we get the iconic. I don't like sand. I hate sand. And then she, for some reason, and after being everywhere, she's been offended and disgusted as she should be up to this point entirely. And then now kiss. Well, I shouldn't I mean, have done that. I wonder if they can actually hear John Williams love score that da, da, <laughs> does help. Da, 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 da. And like, but she's like, just gets swept up in the moment. Cause it is <sighs> a beautiful score or maybe like how creepy is it that he's just like, let me just caressing her he's ribs. Just, and uh, stop. Ah, stop. So bad. Uh, Somebody punch him. Please. <laughs> And somehow he woos her with the worst dialogue known to man. I hate sand. <laughs> mm. It's so dry. Obi-Wan is touring the clone chamber, which looks like the thing from the Matrix. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. How did you uh, like, do you think the, the ladle uh, seats that the Kaminoans have? Cool. 
looks very, it doesn't look good. I appreciated how, well, that's a given. Like, we don't have to talk about how bad the CGI is in every scene. No, I'm just We've like, established the movie's hideous. No, I'm, no, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. They don't I, look comfortable. They don't look comfy. Yeah. They look like the seats from Men in Black that Will Smith has to, like, scoot forward because <laughs> he's trying to write on the table. Yeah. But I also, I actually did appreciate how, if you notice, if you're looking at that scene intelligently, like I did, uh, <laughs> it, it, they, they float it down a little lower because he's human then the Kaminoans need to sit. Yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. were like, they programmed it for human butts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tonway's on the back, like human. But I also butt. hated when they go to the room where Django sleeps, I hated how the door is barely high enough. The doorway is barely high enough for the Kaminoan to leave. Cause it's like, if this is their planet, their doors would be. Yeah. But they're like massive. efficient with their build. So they're like, <laughs> we don't need more room than like an extra six inches. Also, so are there some Kaminoans taller than others? You know, maybe. presumably maybe, or maybe, but, or maybe Ton Wei is just like super tall. <laughs> is that the, the yeah. That's Ton the, Wei is the name. Dead. That wasn't Lama Su. Dead. Ton, Ton Wei's here. here. <laughs> yeah. Mama Sue's the prime minister that has that little kind of a mohawk. Uh -huh. And then Tanwi has the beads on her hair. I see. Her head. Can I just say, um, here. this apartment uh, that he's in, um, I wrote this down. Um, I think the apartment foreshadows what's to come here because here on Camino, uh, the clones are born and raised in peace uh, within this like um, maturation and training program. Like there's no... Uh, danger here. It's just like a place to grow and learn. And Django's apartment is sterile and clean and calm like the rest of the base. But just beyond the glass, there's like a storm outside. There's like high seas and, and, and raging waters and um, dark, dark skies. Darkness. And I think um, <clears throat> that's a, that's like a metaphor for what's to come. Like the Tempest, the rest of, of the Gal, Pixie will will suffer once those clones leave that base is coming. Mm. And I thought that that was kind of kind of a yeah. cool, cool. Um, that was like one of the few like like um, set set pieces I thought like worked knowing what's to come. Visual metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah, we find out in this scene that Django wanted a clone for himself, unaltered, no genetic manipulation to make them more How uh, curious. Uh, docile or anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we get the scene with Anakin and Padme where they're they're talking and he pretends to joke about fascism, uh, <laughs> which is only funny because, you know, he becomes Vader, but it's not funny. It's just silly as fuck. Like, oh, I hate democracy. You know, they never do anything. That is what democracy is. We do talk about stuff. Well, someone should make them. <laughs> Are you talking about a dictatorship if it works? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is the best. <laughs> the best thing to come out of the scene is that meme. Oh, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it, he's he's definitely like a low information. What voter. the fuck is he writing? A a, a cow flea. Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you guys oh, knew the species. Writing, it's a shack. Oh, yeah, shack. It's yeah. called a shack. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I was about to say, like, I don't remember him writing anything while he was sitting there. <laughs> writing. <laughs> and then they have a tickle fight and that scene's over. <laughs> also, it like lingers for like a longer amount of time than is necessary. Oh, with her on cowgirl? Yeah, she, yeah. She's just like <laughs> staring at him and you know that they're just like, hold it. Yeah. Hold it. It was long it, enough. And cut. It was long <laughs> enough where I was watching it with my son and they would linger it on that. And he's 10. And mm -hmm. I was like, it made me uncomfortable enough where I went, oh. Because <laughs> I didn't know what else to oh, say. Bonk. Uh, so Kenobi meets Django. This is where the apartment scene that oh, yeah, Phil sorry, was sorry, talking about sorry. happens. No, you get to see his like little Boba Fett suit in the bathroom, yeah. and uh, apparently the language that he instructs Boba to hide it, and uh, Kenobi doesn't speak. Uh, I like to imagine he does. I Kenobi like to think doesn't react to it, so we don't know if he I like to think what he it. says is the suit that I used to try to kill him in is in the bathroom. Go close the door, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so unsubtle too. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he says that he doesn't know who Cyphodius is. A man named Tyrannus was the man who hired him. Curious. Um, On the moons of Bogdan. <laughs> And then when he leaves, Django's like, it's time to go. We got to pack up because Jedi are scary. We got to get out of here. Uh, Kenobi is, uh, or not Kenobi, Anakin and Padme are telling stories at dinner. And she's eating a pear with a fork for some fucking reason. <laughs> well, uh, she's got to snatch it out of the air because he floats it to her. I know, but the whole premise is that that's how she eats fruit is with a knife and fork. Oh, she's... <laughs> Elegant. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. He, yeah. he, he, fo he forced, pulls her pear over and he cuts it for her. Kenobi would be so angry if he knew Master I was Kenobi showing off. Kenobi would be very grumpy. 
<laughs> Your sexiness is tormenting me. I can't stand it. I'm haunted by the kiss we should never had. Every oh. time I see you, six to midnight, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> when I said I did 1.5 this movie uh, in parts, it was every scene with them. I just <laughs> could not get through it. A Jedi that. and a senator could never date. <laughs> it would could, destroy us. We could keep it a secret. Mm -mm. I'd you have to tell it. Honestly, if we fucked, I would have to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah. honestly so think about this too what if i came in and seduced you and it was actually corday or anime or something <laughs> would you be mad oh no anime <laughs> <laughs> i failed you my lady <laughs> anyway i love how she like uh padme's i don't want to date you clothing is like just the the coolest like <laughs> temptress thing like i like i love that dress it's, it's so just cool a strapless dress steve it's grow like, up but it's great <laughs> uh it's it, honestly one of the reviews i didn't read on letterbox is one of my friends saying that uh the padme's costumes were immaculate and they always are they always, they are, always yeah. on point yeah. yeah uh but obi makes a phone call to yoda and uh in this yoda says you up we <laughs> He says that we can't use the force as well anymore. Don't tell anybody, you know, so because the dark side's starting to cloud it unbeknownst to them. Uh, and then Anakin has another mommy nightmare. And uh, mommy? Padme definitely <laughs> hears him. And he's like, mommy, Jed, I don't have nightmares. And he's, she's like, you definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> Yet you keep yelling mommy. <laughs> I can hear it. It's real embarrassing. I'm actually awake and I'm calling to you. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> oh, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> so he says he has to go help her. And she's like, that's cool. Let's go. And so he's going to go fly to Tatooine. To Ride help or her. die. <laughs> uh, and then we uh, we get the Obi-Wan versus Django fight, which is a silly ass fight that he should Dad. have won immediately. This Dad, look, <laughs> <laughs> this fight should have been so cool. And it just uh, it, I, I like again, I like the premise of the fight. And I know we want to we want to make Boba cooler than he ended up being in the original trilogy. Sure. But at the same time, like this is the guy who defeated Maul, yeah, on the fucking struggle bus yeah. with this jag off, <clears throat> and it just upsets me. But hey, you know? it, it's yeah. raining. He's wet. And none of the stuff <laughs> they did in the Phantom Menace do they do in this, except for Mace Windu. Like, there's no like giant jumps or anything. Right. Yeah. It's just a bunch of like he was hanging in this tunnel, and then like force flew over the back of Darth Maul yeah. while pulling the lightsaber, and I don't know. I just, I want to see consistency with their abilities. That's all. There, there are things I like about this fight because, again, Mandalorians are supposed is cool. to be, Mandalorians are supposed <clears throat> to have like some sort of, they're the answer to a normal person fighting a Jedi. Later typically. he kills the Jedi and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then, oh, I get so fucking mad how he dies. He dies like such a doofus. I know. But, but like, I like how Obi-Wan goes to force pull his lightsaber and he uses his gauntlet to like wrap his hands up. Like, I love that they are using his technology to try oh, to no, it's cool. illustrate, yeah, yeah. but they don't like fully lean oh. into it at all. He still looks like a goober half the time. Like there's this part where I, I think he like, he like spider monkeys around yes, a, and like shoots a, his back missile. shoots his backpack and it looks so, so dumb. I know. Um, and, and then he had like the blade that comes out of his gauntlet. Like it's just this mishmash of what the fuck is that? What it's shape like, is that? It's yeah. just a piece of a circular saw. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Anyway, well, then we cut to my favorite ship. Oh, I'm sorry. One last thing. Nope. The, 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 then we <laughs> <laughs> there's that top that's like Boba goes into the ship and like shoots the cannons at him. And the yeah. way they it's just like CGI fireballs fire like, just around oh him. And like, how did he not just destroy like him? Steve could have done that. And I effects. know he said that like, we weren't going yeah. to like a linger on the fact that this movie looks like shit. But holy shit, this whole scene looks like shit now. It's the it's one of the worst ones for sure. Oh, my it God. It's this and the picnic that bother me the most. <sighs> It did give us a great behind the scenes video. Have you seen the video where Tamara Morrison has like a rainbow umbrella <clears throat> on set and he's like mm -hmm. tap dancing in the rain yeah. in full costume? And it's yeah. and what a lovely man. Yeah. I haven't, but I love it sounds it. like a joy. It is. And then there's that joy of Obi-Wan in the rain, like yeah. kind of bopping around, <laughs> being a goober. Yeah. Uh, then the coolest ship in the franchise. Uh, I am not convinced that they didn't write this in just to showcase how cool this ship is. The one that Padme and Anakin are on. I love this ship. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were doing the. Oh, you like the bounty hunter ship more? Yeah. yeah. 
I hate this ship. Okay. <laughs> that's fair. That, that it's, is fair. Its design is flawed because you have to like lay down when you when you get in it. Well, the platform's it's, supposed to rotate. When it's right? parked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it rotates, yeah. And then like it's it's kind of goobery. Like when they're evading each other through space, it's like that guy's definitely gonna lose because he's got the goober ship, you know? You can't I get mean, a sexy with the teeth. So <laughs> I love the fire spray. And he does get away. Like you literally see him he, get away. So does he? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure he tracks him all the way to where he's going. But and he gets away, the though. demise of their entire plan. Well, yeah, but he gets away in that moment. I guess. He's got a tracker on him. Get him, Dad. I don't. <laughs> I like the slick, sleek, silvery one that that. Pat That's made. fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I know what you're saying, and it's cool because like uh, Mandalor Mando drives one later. Yeah. Isn't the same it's, kind? It's, it's the same. Yeah. Well, That's like their thing. Fire Boba, spray class. Boba Fett's flying it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Boba Fett keeps that ship. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah, it's Daddy's boat. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just he just takes Daddy's armor and Daddy's boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he paints it green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But With like, like uh, some switch foot playing in the background, <laughs> right? <laughs> Angry. <laughs> uh, Any hoozle. Yeah. So the there we cut to Padme and Anakin. They're they're back on Tatooine. We see Watto, um, and he's he's fallen on hard times. It looks like right. He's trying to fix that damn uh, what is it called. A uh, pit stop droid? Pit droid. <laughs> yeah. A pit droid. Pit stop um, droid is good too. Yeah. Little Annie? Because he only recognizes Lilani, Annie because he's so Lilani. good at fixing yeah. the droids. I actually do think the animation of Watto in this is some of the best like CGI character acting. Like yeah. the way his eyes are just kind of like looking around. It and looks good. It's, it's great. so strange like how they got him so right. Yeah. And very few other things. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, Dex was cool. Yeah. Um, they do it to some good effect later, but that should have just been mixed with more practical stuff, yeah. right? You can tell that Lucas does this. He's experimenting with technology and honestly pushing the industry forward every time he does it. It's just mm. sometimes not that he misses. Yeah. You got to remember though, this is <clears throat> almost 10 years after Jurassic Park. I mean, they've, yeah. you know, they've been doing this effectively for a while now. This is the same time that Lord of the Rings is coming out. This is the same time. Um, what else just came out at the exact same time? I think the original... The Matrix in 99? Well, The Matrix had just come out, sure. But I mean, like the, like these big fantastical worlds were being made elsewhere as well. Mm -hmm. uh, better, I would say. Um, but any hoozle. Yeah, they're they're on Tatooine. Watto basically tells them the bad news. Like, oh, I sold her to a moisture farmer named Lars. Guess he's <laughs> nice. He married her. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> There's a lot of people that owe me money. Would you, you help? Could, you could do that. Uh, I like that. He's <laughs> like swatting flies too the whole time. Like I see it, the flies like that are all around. Drives him. home the fact that like Watto has fallen on hard times. He's a stinky boy. He's, he's stinky. He's outside. He's not in a shop anymore. He has no, no, I guess, slave. Yeah. He probably had like, to sell uh, uh, Shmi because he needed the money. Right. Obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we cut to the Fets who realize they're being tracked and then we get the classic hiding an asteroid field move. Um, this is the, this is the scene I jumped. This guy doesn't on, seem sorry. to want to take the hint. Yeah. And it's a cool scene. Fire! It's definitely effective. We get the, the percussion grenade things. Yeah. That's the, those are cool. Yeah. Those grenades are so fucking cool. Kenobi does the Han Solo thing on the back of an asteroid. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I'm yep. just a bonicle. I do think, <laughs> I do think this scene holds up though. Like, yeah. like yeah, the way it, it looks, it, like it, like that scene still looks good. This is the pod racing of Attack of the Clones. Like it's like, oh, yeah. this is neat. Yeah, yeah. It's just like <clears> a <throat> minute long compared to <laughs> right. ten minutes long. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, when he gets down there, Kenobi finds an unusual amount of Federation ships. Uh oh. Um, and we cut back to briefly Anakin and Padme head to Lars's house. Uh, C-3PO is there. He's got coverings now. The Maker. <laughs> I won't recall this at all in the trilogy. Um. <laughs> well, against his mind wipe, but yeah. Yeah. So. But I'm a robot. <laughs> Owen and Baru, uh, we meet them briefly, and it's fucking Joel Edgerton, which is cool. Yeah, it's so funny. I just love that they- The two sons are harsh on human skin. I know, that ha that's, yeah, because this is <clears throat> maybe what? 10 years. Uh, 20, maybe like 20, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be fair and say it's 25 years later, we see what they look like in A New Hope. And my God- <laughs> The sun is doing murder to these people's skins. <laughs> I don't think they look that bad in the. They're handsome yeah. folk, but we're just different than these two actors by uh, sure. amount. No, I mean, of course, no, it's the, just a movie. They're the, different actors, the right? The woman but. playing Baru is like 19, and then Baru 25 years later is 85. Yeah, that's true. All right, all right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, then briefly, uh, then she's a skeleton. 
on, you know, on fire. The sun is really doing some murder. <laughs> she's super hot at that point. Oh, the hot, she's never been hotter. <laughs> wow. Uh, and then we meet. Klieg. What are you doing to your skin? Because I want some. <laughs> we meet, then we meet Klee Lars. Everyone who sees Anakin just says, "Ooh, let's go inside." Because <laughs> like C three PO is like, "Ooh, we better go inside." So he, then he takes him to like an atrium with an open ceiling, yeah. and then Klee comes out and goes, "Ooh, Ooh. we better go inside more. <laughs> we need to go deeper inside for this convo." Get into this Where box. the fuck is yeah. my mom? Like yeah. that would be me. Explain it now. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, by the way, she's being tortured as you're talking, yeah. as you're yeah. hesitating. Like there's more torture occurring. Um, yeah, and like he calls some, them Tuscans. By the way, Steve. Yeah, some Tuscan raiders take them. He says Tuscans. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's. He doesn't want to say that it's quicker. Yeah. But you told me that the Tuscans were a different species that the Tuscan raiders raided. No, I was saying the T Tuscan was the name of a fort that they raided, so they're called Tuscan Raiders. Okay. Yeah. So they're, that's true. Yeah. But, but okay. you can just call them Tuscans because <clears throat> you don't want to say Tuscan Raiders. Sure. Is there a planet named Tusk? Uh, probably. I don't know. No. no. Nothing comes to mind. I'm just, I want to know the etymology of the Tuscan Raider. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they like have kidnapped her. Yeah. Kleeglars formed a posse yeah, to go after her. 30 of them, sure. Lost his leg. Like four of them came back or yeah. so and, yeah. and he, he lost his leg. Yeah. I feel bad for old She's been gone a month. fucked up Klee. Like he, like, <laughs> yeah. he, like he just like he just seems like he's just so done. Like just so drained. I miss my woman. Yeah, <laughs> just feel bad bad for him. I don't know why I live here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I finally found the perfect wife. Bought her. <laughs> right. I lose her and then my leg. <laughs> yep. Uh, so anyway, uh, Anakin's like, stay with the blue milkers. I'll be back. They see they seem like really good people. He doesn't know them at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> And while he's on his little investigative mission, he we hear the duel of the fates re yeah. redux, which is great. It's interesting, An interesting time to use that. Um, and he, he interrogates some Jawas. We we don't see it, but we kind of see it. And we cut back to Kenobi being sneaky. And we know from the OG trilogy, he is a sneaky man. He's a sneaky boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he finds droids being built. Um, and see, you know, Dooku and the Viceroy. And I think Davy Jones from one of the Carib you know, Caribbean movies <laughs> is down there. Obi-Wan This whole Kenobi. scene feels extremely Lord of the Rings to me. I think because the architecture of Geonosis looks like something you'd see in like Mordor or like. Like the where, outskirts of Mordor. Yeah. yeah. And then like the fact that like Chris Christopher Lee, Lee is literally in this movie too. Hello, my like, friend. Same character. Too. And, it, and it came out like around the same time too. So like it just feels like there's like a there's like a little bit of a cross crossover like dipping in here. Thank you for meeting me <clears throat> on this planet without trees. <laughs> <laughs> I do hate any, trees so much. Do you have any roles for me where it's like I'm a. Uh, a, a high ranking member of a very prestigious order that would end up on the wrong side of the civil war. <laughs> Cause I'm all about states. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the same kind of character. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we get the member of the techno union. Watt Tambor. When it cuts to him, why did they not go? Mm -sk, mm -sk, mm -sk, mm -sk. <laughs> uh, you joke, but that actually is a meme I've seen. Really? <laughs> Where it's Watt Tambor playing like Skrillex yeah. and shit. Didn't <laughs> know it. <laughs> what a goober ass character because yeah. like and then he can't even talk well you know it's just <clears throat> well the so the the he's a skakoan and skakoans stop live, live on a planet <laughs> that yeah it is a skakoan uh that has like high pressure so he's in a pressurized suit because if he wasn't in that suit he would blow up he would squish yeah he squish so oh, well, he, he mean would, he wears that when he travels because yeah, his atmosphere holds his guts in. He would unsquish. Yeah, or yeah, he would unsquish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we got we get new Gunray, Viceroy mm. of the Trade the Federation, plan guy Watt Tambor, Foreman of the Techno Union, <laughs> Poggle the Lesser, Archduke of the Stalgassen Hive. Mm. He's the Genos in Libra. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sand Hill, who's the like smushed, like the very narrow mm. face, is the chairman of the Sam Atlantic. Hill. Sand Hill. What in the Sand Hill? <laughs> Damn that, it, Bobby. That's the same species that Darth Plagueis is, is that, that character. It's just like such a random assortment of people at this table. Yeah. Like if it had panned to the right and it was just like you Forrest see, Gump sitting there, like, see, yeah. I, I don't know why I'm here, but I, I, you, I like the techno guy. I like <laughs> hanging out with the creature of the Black Lagoon. Mm. <laughs> Do you guys have any Dr. Pepper? <laughs> <laughs> I got to pay. <laughs> you said he had to pee. I may not be a smart man, but I know what a Geonosian is. <laughs> uh, Anakin 
finds the raider camp um, and he finds his mother. She dies. He she mad. dies? Another visual metaphor here. He literally jumps off a cliff into this scene. And I feel like this is the first moment where like the dark side has truly taken him. So he's like, his life before jumps off a cliff, his life now. Well, and when he die, when she dies, he gets angry. On. Yeah. And the thing that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the way you said that was so funny. Phil has this great metaphor taken. I don't know like, if it's great. It was well, just like, a, like an, an observation. You're like, I don't know if you caught this or not. <laughs> <laughs> but when he died, he got angry. <laughs> and you see, here's what I know. Anger leads to hate. And hate leads to suffering. Suff <laughs> suffering. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. And it's trying really hard and it does some cool visual stuff. I do, I love. I like when he cuts through her little tent. Yeah, it's cool. And he can sense that that's the one that she's in. I bet that hut stinks. Can we? Oh, it definitely does. But yes, he he frees her. And she literally. I it, love. <laughs> she was only staying now she can die like it's almost like she was hanging on because she wanted to see her son one last yeah. time i He's get so it handsome it's beautiful i'm so proud of you i will uh, say that like boy. i think i think this is the only scene in the movie where hayden does like a really good good bit of acting because mm -hmm. like he doesn't overdo it like he like he's reacting to it of course but he's not like oh like until yeah. laid laid on like like yeah. he's like subdued but like he hits i feel like he hits his notes right and this well, is that, another that shot of him where he's holding her and he's like the tears are welling up and then when he like looks up towards the camera and the music yeah. is like yeah. The, yeah the music is great in his yeah no too. it's like it's, it's a good scene the, the, the musical notes feel like someone unraveling and just like the not stable and this is where the yeah. editing undercuts this movie uh, undercuts <clears throat> Because he goes outside, he kills the two Tuscan guards, and he kills a third. You and get then that there's shot a of light the... saber swing, Ooh. and then it swipes to the right. It does the, and it's yeah. just like not now, Marcia. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Let's see it. Yeah, right. Like it's right. not the moment for your coy, right. cutesy shit. Like I'm in it. Uh, like hard cut or something. You know, like it's just or fade to black. Like let me sit in this for a moment. Like this is diabolical, you know? Yeah. Especially cuz the shot before that you you literally see the women and children Tuscan yeah, Raiders yeah. playing with their little puppy dogs and they look like all scared like, "Oh, what's that?" Yeah. It's yeah. it's diabolical and then this undercut by this like yeah. I feel like Lucas is terrified of sincerity. Uh, you know. Yeah, uh, no, no, you're right. I actually hit upon some humanity and it made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> oh shit. Uh white, 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 white. Uh we cut to Yoda meditating. He senses, uh oh, this is not good. It's almost like a thousand voices cried out and were silenced at once. There's a Qui-Gon Jin uh mm -hmm. Anakin. Anakin. Yeah. No. Do you think they called uh Liam Neeson up or they had some ADR they could use <laughs> no, from before? I'm pretty sure that that Anakin is the Anakin drop from episode one. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's that take. Uh, that makes sense. I, I like it, Travis. And it's like the whole Qui-Gon voice thing was a, a nice touch. You think he got paid for that? Um, uh maybe. I don't know. He's probably still getting residge from the Phantom Menace anyway. <laughs> yeah, but if you can you can't tell by his on movie choices nowadays. Two there. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Thousand dollars. I want yeah. that sweet, sweet residge. Well, it's like they they played they paid Alec Guinness like two hundred and fifty grand or some crazy shit for one day of shooting for Empire. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kenobi can't reach Anakin. Uh, realizes that he's on Tatooine. Gets a, what's he, what the blazes is he doing there? Uh, <laughs> so he transmits a message because it won't reach Coruscant. They've knocked out his long range transmitter. So he's going to have to get a relay buddy. Uh, Anakin returns with her body and everybody's like, oh, he's mad. Oh, let's go inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> better go inside. Bring her inside. <laughs> um, Padme, knowing that his mother was just murdered and God knows what else, decides to bring him snacks and blue milk. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And at that point, he's like, I should be all powerful. I Someday I will be. I'm going to learn how to stop people from dying. Anakin, that's something Darth Plagueis would say. <laughs> I don't care. I'm angry. Give me my blue milk. It's Obi-Wan's fault. He's holding me back. <laughs> I slaughtered them like animals. I hate them. And then we get the dun, 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 dun. She also, the like, she doesn't blink in this scene after he says that. She was like, 
it's okay. Like, I kind you, of hate them as well. Did you not just hear what he said? He slaughtered like yeah. an entire group of he people. He just did a genocide. Yeah. They are if, as if sand were uh, anthropomorphized. <laughs> Manifested God. into beings. Then again, she's probably like, I don't want to anger him because he might do it to me. So just kind of <laughs> play this like motherly role for a minute. Like, <laughs> What are these walls made of? <laughs> that or she's like, punch them. That or she's like, oh my God, I've never been more attracted to anyone in my life. I'm what gonna, is in I this blue milk? I hope we get milk. to a gladiatorial arena so I can make out with this little <laughs> man. Mm. <laughs> We cut to kill sand people for me. <laughs> <laughs> we get to Shmi's funeral. Tell me about the animals again, Annie. <laughs> Do you notice that when he's like kneeling in her grave, he picks he up a handful sand. of sand? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just to remind him how angry he yeah, is. Yeah. Oh, I hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> and in the middle of that, R2 shows up and uh, delivers Obi's message. I do think it's very kind of funny that. Darth Vader, Anakin is at the place where Luke grew up. It is kind of a funny little yeah. like, oh, it's, this is where Luke grows up. Weird. Yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. That's I like feeling you're supposed yeah, to have. Good. Yeah. It's yeah. called fan service. It's like, Ooh, Ooh, member. <laughs> it's where Ray will light up her orange lightsaber at yeah. the end of that bad movie. Yeah. And I do love how the scene ends where Padme's like, hey, Obi-Wan has us a uh has we needs us to transmit something for him let's steal c3po <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah my next note what the hell <laughs> we we get the message from obi-wan he's on geonosis then oh no droid to cause uh and windu tells anakin to stay where he is he's <laughs> and padme says fuck that and then I put, why are they stealing C three PO? Why is that yeah. okay? Do you think Cleeg and Owen and Brew are sitting there like, what the fuck? We literally have. Or did like they just nothing. take our pro- <laughs> <laughs> to take this extremely annoying thing away from our farm? Oh, maybe they're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, they didn't notice that he's in the ship. Thank yeah. God. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, the, the the politicians propose that they need emergency powers to be granted to the Senate, and then there's this hammy ass. If only Senator Amidala were here, she has the stones to make us buy an <laughs> army. The thing she definitely would vote for, <laughs> Misa Bustin to to have her here and have that vote. Like they start talking in Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think they're implying Misa I should Bustin. do it. <laughs> uh, and then Obi Wan is bound. We get the introduction of Count Dooku, played by Christopher Lee. And he's so funny. The first thing he goes, he comes in and he's just like, oh, no, why did they do this to you? <laughs> and like, he's almost like, I don't care. They've if gone you. too far. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> anyway, what's up? I'm going to have to speak to the droid manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watching this as an older man now, um, the floating prison thing that he's in looks so nice for like back back pain. <laughs> <laughs> it just looked like, yeah. oh, like all the stress off it, your back. It does oh, look man. comfy. Yeah. He misses Qui-Gon. <laughs> If only Quag on Jin were here. And then he gets like a Morpheus moment where he, what if I told you we were batteries? He tried to red, <laughs> he tries to red pill Obi-Wan. He does. Uh, you know, he says that the Sith Obi-Wan control the Senate, joined. which is his master, which is weird for him to say that. Uh, and then he said, join me. We can stop the Sith. Uh, and like you said, there's an interesting backstory to him that's not really explored here where there is like an element of he thinks he's using the dark side to, as what's necessary to do some sort of good, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which would make him more of an interesting character. Yeah. Um, and then we get to, we cut to Jar Jar causing the rise of fascism. He dooms the the entire rest of every movie from here on to like, <laughs> he's the reason why like stormtroopers exist and I the also, empire yeah. was expedited. Like, did you notice there's a part where he says, Dello Feligates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does he really? Yes. Instead Dello of fellow Feligates. delegates. No, he, he says Dello Feligates. <laughs> wow. I, I, part of me, this makes me laugh so much. Cause I just think of like, you know, when historians today talk about like the, the rise of Hitler, like, oh, we sh- Chamberlain really didn't stand up to Hitler and all mm. that. In the his, in the history books of Star Wars, someone's going, like, and then Representative Binks stood up and said, Dello <laughs> Felegates, <laughs> and thus ushered in the Empire. Yes. It's crazy that, like, George was like, I'm going to use Jar Jar as the, like, comic relief for this movie, and then, like, be, like, the plot device that essentially creates the future Empire in yeah. this one. Well, there was in case that, you didn't hate him enough here. There was that longstanding fan theory because uh, specifically before episode three came out, a lot of people were like postulating like, oh, it can't be as simple that Palpatine's the bad guy, right? There's got to be some sort of twist 
similar to the I am your father mm. moment. Like, where's that twist? People were speculating like that there was actually an evil clone and that was Darth Sidious and the real Palpatine was just a, oh, shucks, I sure do like being chancellor. chancellor. But there was also this other theory that Jar Jar theory. Binks was like the head... <laughs> Like Sith. Sith Lord orchestrating everything from behind the scenes. And like you could find fan art of like Darth Jar Jar. <laughs> I think that would have been like an, like a really interesting twist. Stop. Now, like look, <laughs> looking back on this, not good, but interesting to watch. I, and a twist can only be it, like the, a good twist is in retrospect the only way it could have been. And still I was surprised, right? Not just I gave you no clues. Stop. That looks oh, so yeah. dumb. That's so dumb. He's you know got what I mean? Kylo Ren. Uh, like when you watch Saber. The Sixth Sense and you know the twist, yeah. it makes perfect sense. And sure. it's, it's it's the clues were there. Sure. It's not just out of nowhere a rug pull. Sure. Whereas Jar Jar would be a complete rug pull. No, like, you're right. Yeah, It's, yeah, it's yeah. silly. Yeah. So then um, what happens is uh, fascism. Thanks to Jar Jar. Yep. And, but also, I, I love this major goof here. It, it cuts out and Yoda and Windu are supposed to be like the wisest people in the universe are like, hey, this is good. <laughs> God damn it. I hate it. I love that people are like, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And B, they're in a town hall meeting, right? Yeah. Who's helping Obi-Wan? I wrote that down. Who they just told Anakin not to go help. I know. He's I wrote in that immediate down. danger. And they just went to a government meeting, <laughs> which takes forever. You ever yeah. been to one of those? They should have gotten a jump on that shit like yesterday. Yeah. Like he called them in trouble. They saw him in trouble and they're like, let's deliberate and wait until this. First, we have to go. They're not even involved in the Senate. Right. They could have sent anyone there yes. to watch, like a, a secretary to <laughs> take yeah. them fucking meeting minutes. Yeah. It yeah. bothers me. Yeah. yeah. If Anakin hadn't disobeyed the Jedi order, Obi-Wan Obi 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 would be dead. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. So. So dead. What are we doing here? Yeah. It's bad. That's, that's why, all I'm that's why Mace Windu is not the greatest Jedi. You know, <laughs> he's, he's a cool motherfucker. Yeah. But he's, he's not, most, yeah. he's not What's his great. power level. Cause he's strong. He's very powerful. Yeah. He's, okay. he's the, I think the best swordsman in <clears throat> better than master Yoda. He's better than Yoda. Yes. So like Yoda's like the best force user. Windu's the best saber. So it was just a dumb throwaway line where he said, if you focus more on your saber, you'd rival Master Yoda. Yeah, I think that was just a setup that yeah. Yoda would fight with a lightsaber. But in canon, movie. he's not like well, a saber and guy. And also, yeah. like, he knows that he could never beat Mace Windu. So he's like, yeah, you could rival Yoda. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you're like, not Mace, Mace Windu. Like, come on. A tier, yeah, not right, S tier. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I think Dooku is supposed to be like, <clears throat> better than Mace Windu at swordsmanship or something like Duke who's also one of the best sword fighters in the galaxy he's great. as well. Yeah. He's great. Mm -hmm. Anakin has to dual wield and only is able to do that for multiple seconds. It's really <laughs> well, lame. Yeah. Upwards of it's eight so seconds. so anticlimactic. <laughs> um, eight is being generous. We've yeah. somehow got to get through the rest of this so yeah. quickly, but a lot of shit happens, right? Anakin and Padme land on Geonosis. Uh, they get stuck in that whole conveyor belt scene. It's terrible. terrible. Uh, R2 I love that R2's like fuck you 3PO <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll have your turn to look in a moment um, she ends up immediately in a molten lava bowl and gets saved by R2 instead of Anakin which I find hilarious from here on out I'm just gonna say it now because I don't think we need to really touch on it but from here on out I hate everything that C3PO does <laughs> yeah. it's the worst yeah. however because I'm a cheesy person <clears throat> who enjoys cheesy puns I'm beside myself I, I I laughed at every single dumbass pun, even though like I fucking hate this. He's like, this is such a drag. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then he, there's a, a, a line that I love, which I tell my wife all the time. And actually it, it does work. So I, you should try this if you're in a relationship, but I've been dying a little bit each day since you came into my life. <laughs> <laughs> How romantic. Did you just roast your wife on this pod, pod podcast? No, I'm saying it's, it's, it's funny because don't fucking say that. This right, line is right. dumb. No, I know. Yeah. And then she says, I love you because we're about to die. But I'm not scared of death. And I want you to know that I love you. Um and then we get the the really the joke that does land. The, we came to save you, master. Even and it's because he delivers it so badly and so like such a whiny bitch that when Obi goes, "Good job," it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you fucking nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no notes. <laughs> um, and then there's another part uh, when they're devising how they're going to escape and. And Anakin's like, what about Padme? She's she seems to things. be on top of things and she's already climbing. She's the on top of it. Which, yeah. by the way, good thing, again, that she was like a self-starter because she would have died. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
which I find interesting. Uh, I do like that the dog thing, some people call it a cat thing, but it's, it's a Nexu. A Nexu, right? Nexu, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that it kills the cat notion. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's like poking it and he's like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> I think the, got a bad feeling about I this. I think the Acle goes hard. Is that like, the rhino? That's or the, the mantis. The crab thing. The, the mantis crab. Crab? Thing. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's got the pinchy things. Eh, oh, okay, it, it's uh, crustacean esque. Yeah. Sure, yeah, it's like a mix. If a crustacean fucked a mantis, it, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, exactly. It became that, a yeah. Pokemon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Aqua, aqua. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it rips her shirt perfectly uh, with a swipe of claws, which is just beneficial to Anakin. Uh, I love that it cuts to the Viceroy who fucking hates her. And he's like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. get her. Yeah. Um, he, oh my God, Django, shoot her or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's funny because Obi-Wan fights his, Padme tricks hers, and Anakin tames his. He's yeah. like, it becomes his friend. And it's kind of sad, actually, when he dies later. Uh, and then we get the scene, iconic, where Padme jumps 50 feet <gasps> vagina first. Oh my God, I wrote that down. <laughs> onto the <laughs> Onto the spine of this creature. Bings and then my pussy. She, she gives him just like a little kiss. Like, she, yep. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, baby. Thanks for saving me, even though I said myself. The dark, Later. The dark side is seductive. Later in this fight, when Obi-Wan hops on with them, I wish that he had kissed her. Like, <laughs> like on the same way. Like, just whenever you board a reek, you just... <laughs> Hello there. You guys need a third? <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, and then right as they're about to finally die, all the Jedi show up. Uh, Windu got that purple. This part and, is over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I quote that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's the like, most quote, 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 quotable line in this movie. It, it, like it doesn't just fit in this universe, though, is what's yeah. funny. But I love it. <clears throat> just um, they don't let casually, him have one motherfucker because you can say fuck once in a PG-13 movie. This part is over, motherfucker. I feel like Sam <laughs> Jackson just like said that during his take and they're like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I like that they brought extra lightsabers for the boys. <laughs> I didn't know. I told Steve that when I came over. There's that one lightsaber guy. There's that one Jedi who's like, you all make fun of me, but I always carry spares. And look what happens. You, you hope for the best, prepare for the worst, okay? That's right. <laughs> Isn't a lightsaber like a really personal thing to each Jedi? It where they is, yeah, 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 make yeah, it yeah. themselves and that's, stuff. Yeah, that's why they suck at wielding them because it's not theirs. These yeah. were two Jedi that we fired for. <laughs> they got <laughs> once their pictures came out in the office, they had to go. You can have these ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and Padme is a bad motherfucker. She picks up a, a gun immediately. Django kills the Jedi like a Western. You know, he's a Western kind of guy. What's that guy's name? Like Coleman Trebar or something? Uh, he dies yeah, like true. a doofus. He's like a dick. But just, then dies. Django just dies even doofier right afterward. He yeah, does that no. cool ass thing. And then he flies down, crashes and gets killed. Well, he, there's a little bit more. He to kills that. the rhino. Like there's a moment. I of, think. I think if the I think if the rhino didn't get in the way, he would have had a better chance because the rhino it's kind of cool because the rhino runs over him and it breaks his jetpack. Yeah. And so when he's shooting at Mace Windu right before Mace Windu cuts his head off, you can see his jetpack ignite as if to get him to fly away. But it doesn't go <clears> off because <throat> his jetpack is fucked up. Yes. So if he didn't have a jetpack fucked up, he probably would have made it fine. Or at least gotten away. But instead he dies like a pig. Yeah. Mace, Mace Windu cuts off his head and you see when the when the helmet flies across frame, you can see the shadow of the head being Fall jettisoned out, out of the helmet. Boba like, ah. So yeah, when you see Boba and, holding the helmet, it, he's not holding his dead severed head. <laughs> yeah. I also love that it cuts to Dooku who's like, oh, my goodness. And then back to Mace Windu my who's like, my employee's dead. I told you the party was over. And we we used then, to make fun yeah, of this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have this vivid memory like Phil and I were playing uh, some Star Wars chess. Yeah, it was Star Wars yeah. chess. Yeah, because we get it. Yeah. yeah, you know we can get it, <clears throat> especially in high school. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So much ass all over. <laughs> but we're playing Star Wars chess, and one of the one of the pieces is Mace <laughs> Windu with a lightsaber, and I I forget what piece I took. You like I, took out a pawn. I took out a pawn, but then I I moved the chess piece in this way where he went because like <laughs> in that, the movie, like he not, looks over at Django's dead body, like. <laughs> like that. It's a very pointed yeah. turn, and I just all I did was that, and Phil started laughing. I, so I literally exactly. lost my mind because I knew exactly what what he was doing. Like we like spoke that same visual nerd 
nerd language, even though we hadn't discussed it. And it would just, it hit me so right at the right time. <laughs> I, I still remember that because it was so funny. This part is <clears throat> over. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The chess party yeah. was over. Time to go to bed. You have school tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And then so Django dies. And then I love the dude that force pushes three PO. Like he, he gives that big smile. Kit Fisto. Fisto, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yep. Kit. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm Fisto. Yep. Okay. Just take a moment. Okay. We, someone needs to like Photoshop your face on Kit Fisto body. <laughs> Please don't. And then be like, this is Kit laser with his laser sword. <laughs> Kenobi. <laughs> oh, Kenobi killing the mantis is classic. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. What's it called? A, a kuka? Akle. An Akle. So there's this great fight scene where he, he can't really fight it because he doesn't have his lightsaber. He's got the spear. Yeah. And he's having a hard time from it. I think that scene is inspired by like uh, the old um, stop motion animation. What's that movie where the guy's fighting Jason the skeletons? The yeah. I think yeah. it's inspired by that. Uh, but once he gets his lightsaber and the acolyte comes back for more, if Obi Wan's like "fuck yeah. off," yeah. Well, he does that like <laughs> short, short work. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And like as a kid, we all had swords and lightsabers, and we would play around <clears throat> the backyards a lot. That was the move we did a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, and then Yoda shows up with the clones uh, right at the the, the last second to come in clutch. And I feel like uh, Yoda's voice is iconic, and his like syntax is iconic. Around right? the survivors, a perimeter make. I don't think in like a military <laughs> uh, when things are moving quickly and you need to give orders quickly that his lines <clears throat> should be the way you do that because that yeah. just killed me. It's confusing. Around the survivors, a perimeter. <laughs> what if they went? What? And then everyone died <laughs> while they were trying to figure that out. To the forward battery, take me. <laughs> <laughs> they left uh, R2 and 3PO in the in the gladiator arena, by the way. Good. It's pretty Good. sad. Yeah. Uh, Boba Fett's sad. And then uh, we can't let Dooku escape, blah, blah, blah. If we can end the whole war right now, it's not true at all, but sure. And then window, a window, window, window. I love, there's a scene where they're all in the ships getting away, right? And then I know that's not what they mean because he wants to go down and fight because he's actually a bad motherfucker. But what it looks like is he looks to the right. One of their yeah. other ships full of clones and buddies is blown to bits. And then it cut. And then he turns and goes, I'm going to get out right here. <laughs> 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 yeah. and it's fucking awesome. Yeah. I'm actually going to walk. Uh, Cause he can't, I, I like the idea that a Jedi is almost invincible, but they're vulnerable and planes, which is why Kenobi hates them. Right. Yeah. Uh, and apparently Windu <clears throat> hates them. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get out, please. Um, the, the, yeah. gun, the Republic gunships are like super cool. Yeah. Rad. Yeah. Like that. That's the, 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 the designers wanted to make the, a helicopter version. Yeah. They're Star like choppers. Wars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but those things are like OP because they got rockets, they got lasers, they got those like, like static beam turret, bubble turrets yeah. that this battle stuff looks, is awesome. Yeah. This is yeah. just battlefront. Yeah. Preordained. I mean, you know? there's, it's, there's it's fun. There's that shot when all the dust is around. You see the lasers flying through the dust from the, yeah, the two after sides. The Starship core like falls and, and, and creates the big like dust storm. Yeah. 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 Like that was a scene that I think was on every ILM. Oh yeah. Reel for years. That was like, look how cool we can make lights look. Yeah. And, and it's beautiful. And it holds up. Yeah. All your firepower on nearest starship focus. <laughs> <laughs> I love how huh? like those what? big tanks with those like those like blue beams, uh, they like trace up the ball. And then like at some point it just like hits just the right spot and explodes. And then it just is just like, all right, uh, can't keep going. Sad ball. Yeah. <laughs> focus your rockets right above the fuel cells. Yeah. Ooh, nice one, Anakin. Right of rockets, sir. Decent. Uh, yeah, so then we find out that the Geonosians have the uh, architectural plans for the Death Star. <laughs> Pog of the Lesser built this in a cave <laughs> from scraps. From scraps. <laughs> Dooku takes the designs to Palpatine. Uh, they're out of rockets, so that's why they can't kill Dooku. It's so upsetting. Padme gets shot out. Don't let your personal feelings get in the way. She's just a woman. Uh, <laughs> it's literally his mission. Like his last orders were to protect her, but uh, I get it. It doesn't count anymore. He, what would Obi Pat may do if it was reversed? She would do her duty. <sighs> she would dump me, sir. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even think she likes me that much. She probably doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you either. Yoda senses some ass need kicked. <clears throat> Take me there. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ass kicking, I must do. <laughs> Anakin is way too impulsive. Dooku fucks. Those are my notes. I'm just reading verbatim. I just love, uh, we were talking about this before the, the recording started, but like Christopher Lee like actually was a fencer, yes. right? So he, I love his little like fencing. He does the fencing salute before he yeah, does any yeah. lightsaber fights. It's very so cool. It's great. Yeah. Uh, but all right, Anakin, I can't fight him without you. That's what Anakin, uh, Obi-Wan says. I'm taking him now. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's just immediately lightning fingered into a God. corner, uh, which is foreshadowing that happens to him later. All the light lightning fingering. <laughs> he's fingered by lightning later in the at the end of the other movies, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's just a trick that only the dark side can do. <laughs> yep. That's day one. That's day one. Yeah. Ooh, Sith Lord. If I signed up to be a Sith, <clears throat> I would say, when do I learn the lightning fingers? <laughs> and they would say, calm. Yeah. You got to be patient. Day two. Yeah. <laughs> Today, it's just a bunch of paperwork. <laughs> Background check, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. So, uh, by the way, the way Padme runs. I, I pointed that out to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Hilarious. Um, Kenobi gets wounded. Not grievously, but just like a Little. poke in the arm and a poke in the leg. But that he's like, fuck it, I'm done. Yeah. That hurt. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> Holy Fucking sh- ow. Oh, this is why Qui-Gon Ooch. died. This Ooch. hurts. Anakin, I'm dying. The Anakin gets <laughs> Train two. the boy for me. He's just like the first <laughs> dual wheel. <laughs> yeah, he's the that family guy thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the first dual wield we ever get, right? Yeah, where Anakin has both lightsabers <laughs> briefly for all Bre- five seconds. And for, you're like, oh, let's fucking oh, he's done. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's uh, this fight blue sucks. Balls. Like I'm just saying it, it now. It sucks. It like, sucks balls. Fight. It does. I, like, I, I do like visually. You're talking about a lot of visual metaphors, and yeah. this one was done way better in a lot of the Disney Plus shows recently. But there is a moment that because of those, I noticed when he's fighting Dooku, it's just it's just. Uh, Christopher Lee and Hayden Christensen's faces. They're just yeah. twirling light tubes around. And it's annoying because you want to see the fight. But what yeah. is cool is the effect that it has is uh, Hayden Christensen bathed in blue light and then Hayden Christensen sure. bathed in red light. And yeah. It's an obvious. And light. It's, it's the first time yeah. we've actually seen lightsabers cast the actual light that they're yeah. supposed to. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I think I'm pretty sure. Well, at least it's the, the first time it's done dramatically. Like I think this. Qui-Gon's green had a bit of a tint on, on his face in that one shot. No. Maybe, but I, I think this is at least sure. the first practical light, right? Right. Not right. like a digital light, right? But I, I know, <clears throat> and I get it. Christopher Lee's like eighty. Yeah. <laughs> like in the they wide shots, so they totally just have a digital <laughs> head of Christopher Lee on a stuntman's body doing yeah. the lightsaber fights, and it's pretty obvious. And so I, I do think what they do with the the lightsaber twirling is a is a creative way to get around that. Um, but at the same time, you're like, I want to see the dual lightsaber thing. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then he gets his arm chopped off. Uh, Yoda waddles in and then dances around him like a spider monkey. <laughs> I'm all hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's it's pretty fun. And then and Dooku's I do love, like, I don't I, like how you're talking to me, Yoda. And then Kenobi sits up and goes, I love the way he's talking to you. He's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Yoda's little, <laughs> yeah. his little yells. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, this like again, this was uh, a riot in the theater when this happened. Dude, people were <clears throat> standing. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. but he ends up. Uh, Dooku runs away because he saves Obi Wan and Anakin with the the pillar. He yep. knows he can't win that fight, so he's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna lose this if I diversion. stick around here anymore. Uh, and then we get the dumbass balloon ship. Like, what is this engineering? Oh, you don't like the solar sailor? I actually that love for? that ship. I love the solar sailor. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. You shoot that motherfucker, it's over. It's just yeah. poorly designed. Well, it's, it's, it's not, not meant for functional. battle. No, it's so he, again, it's he's like a pleasure cruise. He's yeah. a Nepo baby, and that is his, that's his, like, pleasure. Uh, that's, that's his, his yacht. yacht. That actually yeah. makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's like, he doesn't even fly the damn thing. He has a droid, droid yeah. that yeah. flies it for him. Give me my tea. Okay. And a handy. I uh, like the ship because it's so unique. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beep boop. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Man. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Do you, if one of those droids worked for a guy named Roger, they would have to say Roger, 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 Roger. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, was, we learned Tyrannus is Dooku's baddie name. Um, they were, oh, we're keep a closer eye on the Senate. We must. Um, I agree. And then uh, <laughs> Kenobi's like, oh, we fucking kick the shit out of those nerds. Kick the shit out of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Loose we did, you know. You sad, silly bitch. We got the Clone Wars half. The shroud of the dark side has fallen. 
um, spin off the show will. And and then uh, uh, they fucking get married. I know. Why? It's so wild. Secret wedding. Secret wedding. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, man, I hated you. Like, I didn't think of you for 10 years. You show up in my life. You're really creepy for like a week. But then there's like one day where you're kind of cool and we like survived battle. Mm -hmm. I think. Are we doing this? Yeah. Also, Should we do this? I'm pretty sure you're 18 and I'm 27. <laughs> <laughs> He's 19. She's like, I think, 20, 22, 24, 24. Because she was like I, a 14 year old queen, right? Yeah. She's four years old, four or five years older than him. Yeah. It's just a weird. I don't like it. But he's got the little robot hand. That's cool. Yeah. And that's Gold. the end of the movie. Fucking thank God. Um, <laughs> that's uh, let's hear the fucking uh, Mad Lib. Well, the Mad Lib's not first. We got to do the medal ceremony. Oh, okay. Yeah. What does this movie do that you're gonna you're gonna grant it a medal, Phil? This is the best use of Pad of Padme. I think. I think she Padme gets the best use of anybody in this movie. Um, episode three, she doesn't have a lot to do. Episode one, she didn't have much, much to do. I think this is her committee. This is <laughs> true. True. <laughs> this is, I think this is her best film. Best Padme. Even though this film sucks. So. <laughs> okay. Steve. Uh, I'm going to say best um, acting by a CGI character, specifically Watto. Watto. In all the okay. movies, that just that one shot of him realizing that Annie, little Annie, that's a good, good one. Yeah. Uh, I think that's good one. and really well done. And I, I can't think of another CGI performance other than maybe like a Yoda that uh, Dexter. Wow. Oh, okay. Can I switch it to Dexter? Dexter? <laughs> I'm going to say best battle sequence. Best battle sequence, like land battle, like open war. Yeah, not like a fight, Whoa. but like war. It might be the only lasers going pew pew. Yeah. I think yeah. That, 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 that two minutes is really cool. They built a whole spinoff show out of it yeah. for sure. Um, and, um, yeah, I like it. Fair enough. Ahsoka's down there somewhere. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, uh, not well, yet, but yeah. soon after. Yeah. Why not? She's Where's the she apprentice at? of. Oh, she's Anakin. not a full Jedi yet. No, she, so she becomes oh, that's right, Anakin. Anakin. Padawan. <laughs> There's a whole period between this movie and Return. Yeah, right? this is Revenge. Right. Revenge, yeah. Begun the Clone Wars have. Not, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not over. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. How much time passes between, between this movie and the next we're about to talk about? Uh, I think it's like four years. So he I could be wrong gets a pad He p passes the trials, gets a Padawan, trains her to, to completion. Well, he doesn't get train her to completion now. Okay. Yeah. She's get, she's kicked out is of the Jedi Is he a full order. Jedi in the next movie even? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he is. He is. Yeah. He's a Jedi Knight very shortly after this movie. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just wondering. Yeah. Well, so tune in how, next week for our review of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. But, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. How's, you, how would you rank this movie? That's what our thing is now. We're going to rank <clears throat> the Streaming Things official Star Wars ranking begins now. Now, just to recap, what we have so far from best to worst is Empire Strikes Back. A New Hope, Return of the Jedi, Against My Wishes, and A Phantom Menace. Mm -hmm. uh, the Phantom Menace. Or right. is it A Phantom? Uh, the Phantom. It's Phantom it's Menace. Potato, uh, potato. Uh, and I, I vote we put Attack of the Clones right below A Phantom Menace. I, I agree. agree. I also agree. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't think there would be an argument there. No. Yeah. We've come to consensus. Easy one. On I'd be surprised one. if there's a movie. Oh, well, never mind. There is one. I'm very, <laughs> there is one. <laughs> I'm very interested to see where revenge shakes out when it's all said and done. Uh, I know a lot of people put it like I've seen a lot of my friends go uh, a ranking like um, uh, Empire, New Hope, Revenge of the Sith. And then like I've seen Rogue, Rogue One. There's no, somewhere. No, I've seen Rogue One dropping uh, oh, interesting. with my like to around seven or eight. Oh, okay. And then like, you know, Solo, Rise of Skywalker, Attack of the Clones is usually at the bottom. Every time I do a list, I think Revenge usually shakes out around fourth for me. Mm. Right about. But I'm interested to see where it'll that shake out here. for me too. Yeah. Mm. We'll see. I know I rewatched it <clears throat> knowing how much people love it and didn't love it as much. But okay, I think so there that, are some good so stuff. So that there. happened to me with this movie. So I'm interested next week to see if, if, if Revenge holds up. Yeah. Now let's hear the fucking Mad Lib. It's time to hear the fucking Mad Lib. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to hear the story you all put together and crafted at the beginning of this episode? Yeah, baby. The title of this story is Watto's Junk Shop. Nice. Watto's Junk Shop. Oh, no. Junk Shop. <laughs> Here we go. If you're cleaning in the Outer Rim territories and you need spare mittens for your space committee, 
or other odds and buns, <laughs> the place to go is Watto's Junk Shop. Here you can find everything from robots that jump like Mexican hovering beams to replacement wires for your coarse droid. So it can search until it blows a... <laughs> <laughs> until it blows a, a frosting. Mm. Mm. That's a sentence. Blows a frosting? Blows a frosting. See, I told you it was better than icing. I knew it would be. Uh, be careful what kind of money you have in your Emmy because Watto doesn't take Republic beans. You may have to barter with something bright that you own. The greedy and sexy Watto would love to get <laughs> Jesus, would love to get his grimy buns on anything that's precious to you. <laughs> hey Watto, wash your ass, dude. <laughs> his grimy uh, buns. I happen to have a chance cube. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled it out of my grimy buns. <laughs> And don't even think about using a Jedi mind trick on Watto. When he says something costs 10 ovaries, you better pay up or he'll raise the price to 69 ovaries. <laughs> nice. I love that Beans was already in the story and then I added Beans. <laughs> what are the odds? Also, Mexican was in there? Yeah. Yeah, and wild. That Mexican is. jumping Beans is a thing. Yeah. But it, and, but it's a weird thing that throw in the Star Wars. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it was just a strange... Yeah, that's yeah. fair. They don't have Mexico. It was like in someone universe. who hasn't watched Star Wars wrote that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's fair. Like, what do I call? What's a Star Wars thing for Mexican jumping beans? And they're like, Greg, who cares? Geonosian <laughs> Jedi beans. Yeah, yeah. Well, folks, that's the story <laughs> as told by streaming things on Star Wars Attack the Clones, episode two. Next week, episode three, Revenge of the Sith. And then we're going to do the sequel trilogy and then we're going to do solo and rogue one it's a whole thing it's, it's, it's all thing. it's all yeah. happening yeah as they say in almost famous that's what penny lane would say uh tune in later this week because again we're going to be talking about the raid redemption uh as well as cloverfield baby and mm. andy special guest andy will be on cloverfield <gasps> Ooh, andy mm. we love you all thank you for listening that's all the time we have for right now we've got to go return some videotapes my name is kit and i'm steve and this was streaming things Happy streaming.